Welcome to the Scam Economy with your host, Matt Bender. Welcome everyone to the Scam Economy. I am your host, Matt Binder, and it's a pleasure to join you. It's been a it's been a few episodes. A few episodes. This has been the first episode, I should say, in a few months. If you're a regular uh, listener of the show, um, and if you're not, then uh, welcome to Scam Economy. You notice absolutely no difference. On today's show, we're going to be talking about. Uh, I mean, what else have you been paying attention to? What's been happening in crypto? Uh, Bitcoin goes up, and all the other cryptocurrencies uh, go up with it. Crypto is having a bit of a resurgence right now, price wise. Price wise, let me stress. Uh, so, crypto's having that resurgence. We'll dive into that. And also, we'll talk about the AI hype machine. That's been the uh, the subject of uh, a few of the more recent episodes of Scam Economy, uh, as that hype machine rolls on. And joining me, though, to discuss all of this on today's episode, I am really pumped to have Ed Zitron back on the show. I'm uh, back. Wel- welcome back, Ed. I could I'm not back, believe... Baby. I could not believe how long it's been since you've been on the show. It feels like I spoke with you maybe maybe like six months ago, but I was yeah. looking at the last time, and it's actually been over a year. You were on the January 20-something episode of Scam Economy in 2023. Which is I, crazy. I, I thought it was more recent too. Right, right. But this is, this, here this I can am. Never, I'm This back. can never happen again. This can never happen again. We I'm must woker than ever. Friendly. Oh, woker than ever. Well, you do now have uh, your very own podcast called Better Offline. Yeah. Part of like the cool, what is it? The cool Zone, cool zone Media. Cool Zone Media. Cool Zone Media Network. Everyone knows Cool Zone Media probably from, from uh, Behind the uh, uh, Bastards, a very popular podcast. And well, uh, I'm on the latest episode as well about Steve Jobs. There you go. It's part of a three part episode about Steve Jobs. It was a stinky little goblin. We'll have to get into Steve Jobs. We we could get into that in just a moment, but I think we should start. Um, you know, I, I feel like if if you're on this show and it's scam economy, we should at least start with and it's it's the big news right now in in tech media and finance media. Um, you know, the the crypto bubble is uh, bubbling again. Uh, it's inflating. Right. Right. And we should we should stress like uh, uh, you know I I think uh, you know when I launched this podcast in early. 2022 crypto hype was at its height and so uh in in not just like people's crypto wallets i'm talking about like the media covering it like the the mainstream getting absolutely brainwashed with crypto coverage left right all over and you know i felt like it was important at that time to really like get out there and stop, you know, the normies from losing all their money as the crypto hypers tried to get them to put money in so they could cash out. Uh, right. I'm not worried I'm not worried about that quite yet happening again. But, I you know, am. you are. You think that's going to I think we're too far from that. It's it's too close to for this is my opinion, we're too close to the last bubble burst with FTX and all the crypto companies. Uh and I think um, that's still in people's mind. I, I don't think we're we're, and I don't think the bubble has bubbled up enough yet. Uh, but you think differently. I, explain the Atlantic. I, I'm, I'm why crypto just won't die? Like we're repeating the cycle again. I right, think... but I, I think I mean I've I've said that myself though. Not why crypto, but I've always warned people that like you know. Crypto's not gone anywhere. Like these companies are still there. They make tons of money. They're, you know, they're they're not gone. Like just when, like right after the bubble burst, and people were like, "Oh, I guess we don't have to worry about that anymore." I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's you would have to top. do something about it to make it go away." Right. What happened was they just went quiet. Right, right. So that was like my my thing. Push. I was like telling people, you know, maybe you don't have to worry about it on like your top ten lists of things to focus on right now, but don't don't write it off. It's not gone forever. So that's why, you know, I'm not surprised by that coverage. I, I just don't see, like, the main, sh- like, just not even talking about the media, like, just people talking about it in the same way they were in 2021 and, like, the first half of 2022. But maybe, maybe, I, you know, I, I could just not be talking Coachella to the right is doing NFTs, man. Coachella's doing it? Coachella's, de- mm. here's the thing. 
if Bitcoin stays above like 65 grand for more than a few more months, they, we are going to see articles that are like, Bitcoin's back. Maybe Bitcoin's good. With the ETF launches, people are like, oh, maybe Bitcoin's a respectable asset now. What's insane is that we have ETFs for an asset that is directly price manipulated. The same guy who said he did the research that said the 2017 Bitcoin bull run was market manipulated said the same thing happened in 2021. Most of the mining power of Bitcoin is in nations that I don't think we're really great about trading with. It, right. It's so bad. It's all yeah. very bad. And a load of really annoying people are going to get rich, which is annoying as well. That's not the worst part, though. I just think that, I just think that this might be one of the this might be the one that washes people out. If we go anything above seventy five grand, we are going to be in the so back territory that's going to lead a lot of people to ruin. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. I think you know, I, I do think there's a. There, I'm still looking on the positive side that 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 last crypto bubble burst was so close that I do think like. You know, mom and dad are not going to get into it. Like, you know, maybe they would have, they, they did last time. Because um, too many people have, you know, that bad taste in their mouth still. Too many people lost that money. But, you know, the get rich quick hypers and the people who dream of being entrepreneurs and stuff, you know, uh, I'm sure they'll jump back into it even if they lost thousands or tens of thousands. I, I just don't see, like, you know, the retirees jumping back into it quite yet. But did the retirees ever drop, jump into it? Or are they going to be the ones that go into the ETFs? That's that's also you know if they're if they're you know they're they're whoever they they invest with buys the ETFs then yes I could see that being an issue for sure. Um, why don't you can, can you actually um, talk a little bit more about that for people who aren't familiar with this because that obviously has a lot to do with with this recent bubble. What what happened with Bitcoin with these ETFs that could be you know sort of perpetuating this. Uh, you know, most recent, uh, you know, number go up. So what it is, is an ETF, an exchange traded fund. It's basically a bucket of securities. And in this case, a, I don't know, an investment group, I don't know exactly who, buys a chunk of Bitcoin and then lets people buy exposure to it through their ETF. This required a bunch of legislation with the SEC, a regulation, I guess, with the SEC that has now become legal. So there's been a bunch of buying power in Bitcoin. Now, so pe people can basically um, invest in Bitcoin by not actually holding Bitcoin, but by investing in this sort of like grouping that holds Bitcoin. Yes. And I'm not really sure how this is better, nor how this is. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of like, oh, good. There's other ways to chop my fingers off. There's another I, kind of knife. I guess older people can't accidentally lose their bitcoin this way by forgetting like the 12 word passcode secret key yeah. to their their wallet their crypto wallet maybe that's the one upside but everything else that's the downside is still it there. is a bunch of legitimate money going into the ecosystem right. which is not good i just it's not good it's not good the price of bitcoin is manipulated we've established this there are multiple different crypto exchanges that have billions of dollars of fake volume that controlled the price and nobody here's the thing that's really really frustrating me right now is all these people are like bitcoin crypto is back yeah look at this nothing has changed they've built nothing absolute the board ape yacht club started their whole what was it, their other side metaverse and it looks like i used to review mmos for a living it looks like shit that i was reviewing in 2008 Right. It I mean, I think I think World bad. of Warcraft in 2008 looked a lot better than that. I, yeah. World, World of Warcraft in like 2000, whenever it launched, what was it, 2006, four? four? Six. Yeah. I can't it remember. Looked, it looked better at launch than this. I mean, all right, we, you know, we could say that it's a big company. Blizzard was behind Warcraft. But the point is that, like, they had all this time. Yuga money. Labs has a higher valuation than Blizzard did when World of Warcraft came out. Right. Right. Yuga Labs is huge now. Hundreds of millions of dollars. They're um, worth like $4 billion based four, on their last funding right. round. Right. Like this so is I, the thing. These companies don't build anything. Chris Dixon puts his bullshit book out about, oh, what was it? A read, write, own? I think it is. Yes, a, I think that was it. What a bucket of bullshit. Right. God bless Molly White for I, I for I'm going to have her on to talk ground. about that book. Absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that book, she makes the point that he doesn't actually have any use cases for crypto yet. This is and a guy just... whose job is it to literally he works for a VC firm specifically heading up their crypto investment, like investing in crypto companies. Uh, and he couldn't come up with a, a use case for it. And that's because there isn't one because it's bad software. It's it's never been good software. It doesn't do anything other than create new forms of sweatshop labor in the Philippines. It's right. extremely grim shit. And it's just very frustrating because I genuinely believe that if we have another massive bull run, if this is the one which goes up to like Bitcoin over 100 grand, people are going to lose their fucking shirts. And I don't think people realize how bad it will be because already when it started going up, there was a massive outflow of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars leaving the ecosystem. That should tell you everything about what this is. And while they'll claim that this is legitimizing, I, I have just reached a point where I don't trust any of these people at all. I just don't trust them. They've built nothing. This period since, let's call it November 2022, this was the time to impress me. This was the time where money was not the problem, where you weren't pulled by the throes of capitalism. And now you can build something. I will build. It's time to build, to quote Andreessen from 2020. And nothing was built. Nothing. The other side has come out, the board Ape metaverse. And it's just... What's really actually annoying about that is that I can't play it without a board Ape or without buying land. And I won't put $300 into this. I can't do it. Oh, that's all I you got to put. That's all you got to put into it. I think now? you have to buy like a piece of land and then you oh, are allowed okay. to access it. But you won't appear as a special ape unless you buy a board uh, ape. Right. I was that, that still costs a pretty. Yeah, they're still what? Well, they're still what, 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 cheapest board ape. Let's take I a mean, look. They, shall they, we? they they definitely fell in value, but not enough because I mean their real value is, is zero. They're a piece of they're JPEG. <laughs> uh, but I mean they're still. Weren't worth... they meant to be the future of IP? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is... that's that's a good one though. You ever hear of Doodles? Doodles NFT. Uh, yes. So, so Doodles was great. For years, Alexis Ohaney was beating off in front of journalists, not literally, sorry, Alexis, saying that, oh, yeah, this is the future of intellectual properties, like buying a piece of Disney. And then I think it was March 2023, the CEO was like, we are no longer a speculative asset for like we, we don't deal with any of that. Doodles is yet to create anything. Every so often, I like to go into the Doodles discord and say that Hap, who's the main guy, has been killed. And they get, all get very angry. And I just leave and I'll do it again <laughs> in a few months. And I, I know it sounds horrible to make fun of people for this. But at the same time, if you're in a special Discord to talk about doodles, I can come in there and tell you that Hap got killed outside of Kandahar. That's my, I'm perfectly allowed to do that. But also, this thing's still fucking exploitative. It's still as bad as it ever was. And it's like, what? what's going on? Why are we even humoring this? Why are the articles not out there going... Why is this worth this much? Right. I realize that CNBC, 90% of their traffic is just posting Bitcoin is high or Bitcoin is low. But someone else needs to post something and say, hey, what the fuck is this? Nothing has changed. This is the same shit that Sam Bankman Freed got rich on. Right. You know what? You know, the thing is, like the ETF, like the ETF thing happened, like the, the Bitcoin ETF was, you know, accepted by the uh, SEC. It was a couple of months ago now. This isn't like a direct effect that like, you know, this went live and Bitcoin speculating off how that'll be good for Bitcoin went up. Like this is a, a extremely delayed reaction. So it makes me think that like it's not so, you know, I'm sure it plays a role, but it doesn't seem like it's the di direct correlation. Like something else is going on here. And I think that it's kind of like the many times before we don't really know why the values go up. We don't really know yet. And maybe it is that there's now billions of dollars of real money in this. Maybe that's what it is. But at the same time, why does it keep going up from there? Is it retail investors? Is it Coinbase who crashed the moment the prices went up? By the way, that happens every time. The moment the prices are high and people go, oh, I'm going to sell my Bitcoin on Coinbase. It's like, sorry, mate, unplug the server. Sorry about that. Let me go. Let me go check it. Oh, it's working again very slowly. That's 
that actually that shit is what really begins to jokeify I me. Mean, that's when I'm just like, I ah, what? Why do the bridge not have these? Contr- why can they do this? Why? Anyway, I'm going a little bit insane. No, I think that's. I, I don't even think it was just Coinbase either. I swear, I saw another crypto exchange also say they went down today. Why? You know, it's it's interesting that this always does happen. These exchange exchange excuse me. These exchanges have no issues when um, you know, everything is uh, kind of dull or number goes down, and then all of a sudden, you know, if the price is rising, price is rising, and oh, oh, we're down for a few hours. I mean, they they can say that, uh, oh, this is happening because the influx of people, you know, obviously the number's going up, more people are coming in to cash out. But, I mean, these are huge companies. They should, by this time, March 2024, have systems in place to account for this influx of users during these periods. The fact that this consistently happens, I mean, what are, what are they doing here? Unless it's, uh, you know, uh, the most... Um, it, ignorant uh, problem to have like just oh this always happens and we just never get around to fixing it i mean if you well, want to believe that the, fine that's because the entire crypto industry is run by fucking scam artists like that's the thing that's what's happening here they do, no there are no regulations that give any kind of sla for a crypto exchange they're not really regulated the sec has threatened people and i think they've sent the wells notice and there's the whole thing against coinbase very bad but nothing is happening yet and until something happens where there should be some form of SLA with customers, they should have a service level agreement that says we can't, you can't just go down whenever this happens. That to me feels like something fraudulent. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's innocent. Maybe it's just the fact that selling into the market is harder. But surely they could operate against that by having liquidity that's actually on site, which doesn't require an internet connection. I don't know. Something doesn't feel right about any of it. And it keeps happening because no one uh, fucking and no one in crypto polices this. There is no CEOs in crypto who are like, hey, maybe we don't need this. Right. Maybe we uh, need Coinbase to be better. Mark Andreessen isn't saying shit. Yeah, I, I will say it's interesting that, uh, you know, I, I was looking around to get some sort of answers as to, as to why now um, what's going on. And I will say it's interesting that um, uh, just I think it was just yesterday. Uh Tether printed its 100 billionth USDT. There's now 100 billion Tethers out there. I mean, that's that's certainly an interesting uh, occurrence. Uh, just nothing yeah. happening to Tether either. Just, just Tethers. A coincidence. Just they just print money and it's fine. And that money is going into Bitcoin, which is raising yes. the ETF price. It's just, right. I've. <laughs> I haven't written a lot about crypto recently because there wasn't a ton to write. But also on some level, every time I wrote about it, I was like, I am just repeatedly screaming. I'm just I did an episode on Better Offline about the Winklevosses who are now allegedly going to return the billion dollars of money to earn customers, though it's not clear where that money's coming from. And it's contingent on the bankruptcy courts approve again. Maybe Nevertheless, just, maybe they just, maybe they just decided to deal with Tether. Just, uh, oh, suddenly a billion Tethers yeah, showed well, up. We in need, a... <laughs> uh, we got, we'll just go into the USDT reserves. But every time I think about it, I just get annoyed because it just feels like the bad guys are winning almost every time. Like the people that are getting rich here are not like, it's not like the people who had their money in this, who lost last time, waited until now. Though they probably sold so that they had some And liquidity. they sold at the bottom, right. And they or sold at the, the bottom. The most recent bottom, yeah. And it's like, the people that are going to get rich here are the people who could afford to hold. Right. And it's just, and I, what, my big worry, and I've said this a few times, is that the next bull run is going to be the last and the worst. It is going to be a massive run that gets in all of this retail investor money, and then it's going to shit itself down. I think the, and just, well, stay with me now. Do you really think that if Bitcoin goes like 75, 85 grand and stays there, do you think the media is going to go, oh, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves, all right? Last time this happened, it lasted like six to 12 months. We need to be hesitant. We can't really be pushing people on this or do you think we're going to get 900 different articles about if you invested in ethereum a year ago you would have made this much money i think that's what we're going to see i think we're going to see a bigger nastier uglier bull run 
that hurts people so much more. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's not. But it certainly looks like it. Bitcoin's worth, what, 60 something thousand dollars? Why? Why is it, it worth that? It, and it happened. It happened. Again, it happened very quickly. But also, I want to stress again, because I know the, 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 you know, the, the crypto fanatics and the Bitcoin maxis are listening to this. And they're going to be saying it's because of the ETF, obviously. But again, this is this. When, when did the Bitcoin ETF even um, no, get I, approved? I think it's, it's, I genuinely think the Bitcoin ETF could be a part of this. It's definitely a part of it, but it's not like the di it's not the di like this was. Uh, they launched about a month now. ago. Two, two months ago in January, early January. Yes. So, I mean, it's plausible that this could be it, but at the same time, the Bitcoin markets have never really been attached to logical influx of, right. of capital before. And I, and I would have and I would have believed there was a, you know, it was a, a closer correlation to right now if it was like, oh, you know, since it got approved, it's been slowly, you know, going up. But the approval, the approval, nothing really happened for weeks and weeks after the approval. And then in mid-February. It starts to go up a bit. It goes from the, well, the you know, 40s push, to the 50s. Pushing back and, a bit. That yeah. could be how long it took for the real money to go into the system. Okay. That could, that's that a good could point. Be just, I don't know, but that seems plausible. Right. That's a good point. I'm not saying it's right, but if you put billions of dollars into an asset, it will probably increase in value. It sucks. They, It's the ultimate con. Tim Draper's probably really, really, really rich right now, which I think should make everyone very sad. <laughs> make everyone very angry and sad. Now, if I was being like uh, one of the like dirty bubble media brain, like Burgersburg mode here, I would think, wait a minute. Suddenly, the Winklevosses are able to pay off one point one billion dollars just as mm. just as the price goes up. Isn't that weird? I don't think that. I don't think these two things are connected. But those fuckers are even richer than before. How bile inducing! The bad guys are winning again. And I, I worry about this. It could crash right back down. It could be at $50,000 in a week. It could be at $30,000 at this rate. Or it could now go all the way up to a hundred grand. And people will think, oh, this is, the, this is what they were telling me before. People are stupid. I live in Las Vegas. People have magical thinking. They'll think that the last time was when all the bad betters were washed out. But this time... The golden ones will succeed. Now Bitcoin's legitimate. Now Bitcoin will be held by ETFs. Uh, I don't know about that. I, I think that things could go, if when they go poorly, they go really poorly this time. Now the other argument could be, well, there's no more Sam Bankman Freeds. We got rid of the bad guy. We got rid of the guy who was crapping out everything. We still have plenty of whales who will dump out. And what? how long have we got until the halving? Let's see, Bitcoin halving timer. Uh, we have... 39 days roughly until the halving do you think do you think this could be part of it too like the bitcoin th insiders you know trying to get ready to you know get get the price to a place where they want to cash out before the halving or something like that i think the the halving is what they're going to try as try and justify this as i think it's more likely just more market manipulation right and it's insane we don't know it is completely insane we don't know we should have a better idea of how this insane asset class works now. We should really know that, but we don't. We don't know. And I don't know if the halving actually affects pricing. I don't think, well, let's see, did big, like, I, th I feel like, I don't think it actually did anything last time. Like it just, it, the justification was, oh, several years after the halving, the price went up. And it's like, at that point, you could ju you're just doing more magical thinking. It's just very frustrating. I don't like it because nothing has happened. Nothing changed. Right. right. It's actually oh, really strange. Can you actually really quickly for the audience who might not know, quickly summary, really a couple sentences, what the Bitcoin having is and what it's going to do. So every four years, the bit or like it's a certain amount of blocks, the number of Bitcoins that will come out of a, a Bitcoin block when it's mined will halve. So at that point, less Bitcoins will be created to the point that there that there is just a minuscule amount of Bitcoin being created with every halving. So every 210,000 blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain. And the theory is that due to this being a more scarce asset, it will increase in value. This has right. never really 
actually come to pass. Like it doesn't seem like it's affected it before. But also the other thing to remember is Bitcoin drags the price of every other cryptocurrency up. So this bull run is going to be big for everything and everyone. Like Ethereum, what, Ethereum's over three grand now? It really yeah, is Ethereum, like- Ethereum it, was going, it was, you know, I, I even saw like even like some of the, the bigger meme coins, like uh, the ones that like survived, like uh, Shiba, Shiba Inu coin, the one that's like a ripoff of Dogecoin. Yes. That was going up. I mean, Dogecoin obviously itself was going up. All these things are, like you said, tied to the hip with Bitcoin. I don't know. It just <laughs> on one hand, I'm like, don't invest in this. On the other hand, maybe it'll keep going up, but it sucks. It sucks so much. I just hope it drops before all of the newspapers decide that they want to pretend this is for real. Like, yeah. that's that's my big worry here. Because right now, I think you're right in that people are still burned from the Sam Bankman Freed side. But I worry that the existence of ETFs is going to justify this industry and legitimize it. And then we're going to, we'll see if Andreessen Horowitz starts up the money machine again. Yeah, it's certain, like, it's certainly, it, it's, it's certainly something to, watch out for like I, you know we're not we're not in the lull period we were over the past like i don't know six or seven eight months even maybe like not much was happening in crypto uh, over the past year or so really um you know at least when it comes to affecting the the the, the you know retail investor or people even thinking about jumping in and becoming an investor but like now is certainly the this is like the time period right before the last uh, bubble jumped into the mainstream, and then everyone was putting their, their like, uh, their, um, you know, their their stimulus check from uh, COVID, the COVID lockdowns. They're putting their stimulus checks into crypto because they were hearing everything going on. Uh, we're we're in that period right now. Th that period right before people like your your brother or sister or mom and dad, your non tech savvy family members and friends are all of a sudden saying, "Hey, I just invested in this. What do you think? If, you know, did you look at this? Did you see this?" <sighs> I just I hope it. I don't know. Do I even want it to crash? I don't even know at this point. It it all just feels very strange because it didn't climb up connected to any publicly seen events other than the ETF. It all feels very strange and it climbed very fast as well. I don't know. The whole thing stinks to me. It doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense before, but it really doesn't now. And what is going to be the real canary in the coal mine here is going to be if you start seeing big media articles. If you see, if Kevin Roos writes another New York Times piece, and I give Kevin respect because he grilled Chris Dixon like a burger on Hard Fork Podcast. He actually went for his ass. Casey Newton made him back down. Casey's a coward. Sorry, Casey. Can't, you can't you let Kevin cook. Kevin Roos burnt Chris Dixon. You should go and listen to that. Oh, I gotta check but it if out. I, if fucking Kev, Kevin Roos decides he needs to do another maybe crypto's good this time thing, or if anyone else at the Times does that, they are going to lose people money. And all of these people saying, oh, have fun staying poor. Oh, we were right the whole time. What were you right about? That Bitcoin was worth money? No, none of these crypto people have built anything. There's nothing. I've been watching. I've been watching because I wanted to see what they do without the worry of the public, without people wondering whether it would be worth something. And they built nothing because none of these people build anything. They're all con artists. It's a fucking joke. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it, what's interesting, you brought up how, um, you know, we were talking about this right before we went live too, about how, you know, the, the crypto people are, you know, going at the, uh, the critics, uh, once again, after, after they were really quiet for the past year or so, really backed down, just, uh, had nothing really on their side to argue, but then all of a sudden number goes up and they're back out there saying like, Oh, funny how wrong you were. And first of all, like. Like you just mentioned, um, nothing was created. The, the the price is just going up again. If the the your whole point was Bitcoin would go back up again, okay, that's yeah, not really what you guys were arguing. But then on top of it, like many of us always said too that like it's not dead, it's not gone. Like this is just another quiet period. Like there has been uh, over the past like decade and a half where things die down before they bubble back up, and there's another bubble. Um, but also, like. The, I would say the, the, the critics finally started getting, like, the, the Molly Whites, 
um, uh, out there really started to get the credit when they came out and criticized it when Bitcoin was at its height. Because we were warning people about what was going to happen based on previous times, except this was the first time that it really made that crossover to the mainstream. So there was a, a very large, whole new audience to that message. And like that was like when the critics were at their loudest with the, the same criticisms we have now, when the number was almost at 70k for bitcoin last time when ethereum was hitting 4k last time when all the meme coins were sprouting up promising everyone that this was going to be the meme coin to get them rich like dogecoin made a few people rich you know people might have heard about that dogecoin millionaire that everyone spent so much time on in the media cnbc covering the guy the dogecoin millionaire the guy who put like i don't know what it was like a couple of uh tens of thousands of dollars some of it even like took out of a loan or whatever he went all in uh on uh dogecoin and he became a millionaire because number just happened to go up shortly not long after he uh started investing and you know no one ever went back to the story to tell the rest of it how he never sold and he just holds all this Dogecoin now and he's not a millionaire. He's not even close. He, I don't even, maybe he's still in the green, but not as high up as he was before. It depends when he bought. I have to look that up. But he's not a Dogecoin millionaire anymore. But you didn't hear, you know, the news coverage of that. You know, I would love to know how many people um, who, who were covered by the media as these big crypto success stories actually just never sold and just were, were paper, paper rich and never had anything and never sold. So they never got out when they, they should have. But now I'm wondering also, like, you know, you mentioned earlier how many people, you know, uh, sold at a loss prior. I would be interested to see how many people who lost so much just deemed that it wasn't worth it to even sell and just held on. And now they're able to maybe like, recoup exactly what they thought they lost just by selling now on this like you know this this bubble we're seeing now yeah and i i just don't know because this really crept up on us there wasn't a big media push there wasn't really something to look at and say oh shit this is this is why this is happening this is there was no run-up it's just happened and there it's all been done without any major crypto investment things there's not been like any, I don't know, some weird thing where it was like, oh, Blingus got $300 million from Chris Dixon's asshole. We didn't get anything like that this time. And so it's like, what is happening? I don't like it and I don't trust it. And the real, that's actually, I think, going to be the big thing. Will the result of this be that we see a renewed amount of investment in cryptocurrency projects? Will we see a sudden influx of money into the industry? Or will venture stay out of it? Will venture stay out this time? And it really comes down to Andreessen and Horowitz. Will they invest this time? Will this be their call? Because they've put a lot of money into AI. They've really spunked their load all over AI at the moment. Will they return to crypto? Because if we start seeing the same thing where it's like Andreessen Horowitz invests in a crypto company, they create a token and it liquidates right into Coinbase, then we're back, sadly. We are back into the big scam. And I think we might go to 100,000 or something like that. This is not financial advice. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I just, I fear for it all. But venture money is going to be very interesting. Very interesting right. indeed. Will we see the venture community start jerking to this are they going to be excited by this is this going to be a big deal or is this going to be something where the venture capital just goes i don't fucking i don't want to touch this shit no nah, man yeah I, don't I, don't let me i don't want to touch this bullshit right. leave me alone yeah there may, may hope hope I, I can't believe i'm saying this but hopefully they're still so caught up in the ai hype that they're focused on that and won't get back into this or they fear uh, the sec yeah because the sec did in one of their multiple lawsuits one of them against coinbase actually i think it might have been to do with their wells notice they actually did name seven or eight different tokens that they claim are securities so it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens there right but i don't know i would i just tell everyone be very worried if you start seeing venture money flow into this right. that's when it's time to freak out 
Also, if you're seeing the number go up right now and you're th considering getting in, again, none of this is financial advice, like I just said, but if you're thinking of getting in now, uh, even if you're just like someone who wanted to just like, you know, do a, a day trade or something, you're, you're in dangerous waters right now. The time to have been doing that was last month. We're at that price level where it really could go either way. And whatever you're going to make, if it does go, uh, you know, uh, uh, up a little bit higher, is not going to be worth the losses you may incur if you don't sell at the right time. Uh, this was the absolute worst time to buy in last time around. And a lot of people bought at this 60,000 to 70,000 level last time thinking it could only go up, continue to go up. And they were stuck at the very top and couldn't To be sell clear, off. it went from 69,000 to like 63,000 today. It has dropped that much that right. quickly. Right. So I would be very cautious that you know this is this is the worst time to buy in if you were in twenty thousand dollars ago i would say you know you have a bit more time to figure out when you want to sell and when that perfect time would be and if the number would go back up but right now you're dangerously on the cusp of losing a lot i think and also my other thing is if this crashes from here all that etf money is going to be very angry that's why it could sustain. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they will just dump this right out. Maybe they will just be like, okay, fuck it. We got, we got our 70K and we're done. Or maybe they push it from here because they want more ETF money. Like that's really, this could get really interesting and annoying in equal measure. And I, I don't know. I, f I find it very annoying because it does not feel like it's based on anything. And it feels like we will repeat cycles that got a lot of people hurt in the past. What's funny though, is because of the way that the Gemini earn settlement will happen, some of those people will make a lot of money because if they'd have withdrawn from Gemini earn at the time, it would have been like 15, 16 grand. Now it's like 60,000. I think for their sake, that would be really funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see, I guess. Um, let's, let's actually pause the crypto conversation. Fine, fine. Uh, no, because there's so much more to talk about. You know, you you uh, you brought up how you know your podcast. Let's name drop it again. Better offline at betteroffline.com. Better there better you go. Betteroffline.com. Uh, you mentioned how you recently did an episode with uh, on uh, Behind the Bastards, which is the mm -hmm. like the main podcast that your podcast Jewel in the Crown Network is part of the Cool Cool Zone Media. And you did this the multi part podcast episode on Steve Jobs. So let's actually talk a little bit about Apple, because since you last came on the show, the Apple Vision Pro came out. Oh, yeah. $3,500. Um, you know, I will say, I, I, well, yeah, with less tax, I, I will say I'm, uh, I'm, I, I was uh, a little bit surprised that I, you know, maybe Apple was gauging the interest around it and how much to put into it. But other than that, like, initial, like, launch celebratory like ads and stuff like that they really haven't been pushing it that hard honestly from what i've seen at least maybe i've been just resisting viewing advertising around it but um you know they immediately life went on and apple's got their uh, other line of products they continue to to knock out they just uh, i think i heard just as much about the new m3 macbook airs that just launched um yeah it was so i bought a vision pro oh you I have must... one interesting i did, did an episode of better offline about it oh everyone's got to so, check that out including me so tell us about I, what you think it's very annoying because <laughs> there are times where you use it and you're like, this feels like the future. Like you put it on and you have like an 150 inch looking, sc it's huge. It looks amazing. And then it get, then you get a fucking headache. I was on a plane using it, got a headache. I'm like, great. I can't, I got like halfway through Dune. And even if I had not got halfway through it, I would have had to charge the battery or replace it because it only has a two hour battery life. Mm. Selecting things sometimes doesn't work. If you're in a moving vehicle while using it or a plane, you have to turn on travel mode. And sometimes when it does it, it doesn't put the things straight. So you get your menus at an angle. It also does not have half the apps you need for it. And also, you're right. It feels like it kind of disappeared on us. That it was the biggest thing and now it's gone. I actually kind of, I don't feel bad for Tim Cook, but man, you've got to be pissed. You've got to be so 
pissed. If you're Tim Cook and you watched all the hype that Mark Zuckerberg get made happen for the metaverse, which did not exist, and they actually put something out, and the bear. And here's the thing. The Vision Pro is too expensive. They shouldn't have pushed it out like this. They should have done it as a developer edition. They're fucking scumbags for that. That pissed me off. Because this thing was released too early. It should have been better. Right. But at the same time, at least he built something. And I, I like mine a lot. But also, I don't know what to do. Like, when I use it, sometimes I get a headache. That's insane. I paid so much money for this fucking thing. I didn't always get a headache either. I just started getting them when I use it. Maybe I'm sick. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. May, no, I mean, it's is it the weight or is it just like the the screen I in just your get face? Like a, and... I think it's the screen in my face, and I think it's when everything is too dark around you, your eyes feel just like burned by the the bright lights. But also, it's something about the weight on here. And it's annoying because you use it, and it's like, if this thing did not hurt me, this would genuinely be the best way to watch movies because it's awesome like i don't care cynicism aside it's such a good way to watch stuff i watch all the slow horses on it slow horse is fantastic apple tv really good gary oldman is a horrible old spy watching stuff on it is incredible it looks amazing and when the whole looking at stuff and clipping thing moving stuff around it's all very intuitive it's awesome but it's too expensive and too variable, and the, the fitting thing for it is complete bollocks. It's just you have to scan your face with your iPhone, and then you get sent the wrong thing, and then allegedly you can trade it in, but I have no goddamn idea where to do that. No one tells you these things. I think Apple dropped it onto the market kind of as a developer edition, but were like, fuck it, let's just do it and then never mention it again. Like, there's a new operating system update for it that apparently just came out. I saw Mark Gurman tweeting about it. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, maybe I should put it on. I'm like, when? When am I going to put this thing on? I need to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I would love to play on my Vision Pro, except they don't have the PlayStation Remote app. It just feels like they didn't bother. If, they, if I was Apple, I would have had fucking Martin Scorsese and whatever film people talking about this thing. Because I will absolutely say... This is a faithful cinematic way of watching something. It feels like being in a cinema. Hmm. It really does. If I was a big time movie head, this would be so good. And I feel like Apple could have also had a budding concert thing for it. I've watched a few YouTube concerts on it. A few Queens of the Stone Age concerts. Incredible. It looks so good. It's so, so immersive. The focus it gives you. It's so cool. But then your head hurts, or then a menu breaks, or then you try and use the on-screen keyboard, which does not work properly. And you're just like, ah, could you have not kept this in the oven for another year? Like, it's just, it, it's so frustrating watching a company half ass something and then make $700 million. You know, I, 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 I'm I pretty sure they launched it because they were like, we got to get this out there. We've been working on it for 10 years. You know, I, at the, you know, I was really prepared for this to like become a, a thing that like people were like the the hype around it and Apple pushing it was was so much that people were going to, you know, fall into buying this really expensive piece of gear that was going to, you know, perhaps not be uh, actively developed in a, a few, you know, in a, in a year or two. But it seems like Apple is even like, um, you know, if you really want this. It's there for you, but we're not going to like overly like <laughs> we're not going to promote it to the point where you feel like you have FOMO if you don't have it. Like you're not you're not missing out if you don't have it. Like it, I'm almost shocked. <laughs> what's an, You're right, though. They've been kind of demure about the whole thing. It feels like they put more effort into AirPods. Like it's strange. But also, I'm not even complaining about it, though. I, I like that they're doing yeah. that. Cause I don't think like if you if you bought it, you're someone who a has the money and like you know it was for your work or something, whatever. You the reason you bought it. That was my and justification, you, right? And you were gonna buy it anyway. Like you weren't convinced. Like it didn't take like the pushing for someone to like make you, you know, buy it. You bought it because you were gonna buy it anyway. So like I was really concerned that this is gonna was gonna be like a product that like that had this like cult around it that people were going to feel compelled to have to buy. And it just didn't happen. And I can't complain. Thank you, Apple for not, 
<laughs> oh, not I doing mean, that to people. <laughs> but at the same time, they released a half finished product. Right, right. But that but only really it, that only really screws over the people who had the money to buy it to begin with. <laughs> but also, yeah, I mean, fuck us, right? But also, <laughs> but also, here's the thing. When you use, it's the first thing I've used in a while. In like, I can't remember the last time I used something. I'm like, wow, I live in the future. Sorry, here's my cat's asshole, everyone. Check him out. Um, so, it's the first thing I've used in a while where I'm like, this feels like the future. I feel like this is actually cool. It is not consumer ready. It is so early. But at the same time, I watching movies on this is fucking sick. It is absolutely sick. It really is. I sat talking talking to my fiance, typing away on my magic keyboard, watching a Queens of the Stone Age concert. I was like picking shit. It was fantastic. I was sat on the couch, one of my other cats. And it was just like I was like, this is so cool. Why can't it always be this good? And I hope they fix it, but at the same time, why have I like I get I have to pay to like beta test it. But at the same time I, whatever. I got it I got an episode out of it, I got a newsletter out of it. My friends come over, they see it, they want to play with it. They now no longer have to buy it. It's great. Everyone wins except me. No, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm actually very happy with it when I've used it, and I feel like once they add PlayStation Remote to it, I'm gonna use it a lot more. Like a lot, lot more. Right. And also, it's yeah. really good as a as a second screen for the laptop as well. Like I've done, I've written thousands of words in it. It's brilliant. Like the focus you get from this thing's incredible. I do have I do have to try it still. I haven't even I have to get to an Apple store and do a demo just to see what it's all about. Because you know I do I do think um, it could be something. You know, but, but here's one thing I want to bring up before I forget because this is this has been my criticism about it. I think, you know, the the whole like VR AR headset glasses whatever these different companies are coming out with in Apple's case it's an AR slash VR headset. Um, I do think they're they're fine products for what they are for those specific use cases. And like if you're there was this uh, at, at CES this year, there was this um, this uh, AR glasses company that I tried out real glasses. That's the name of the, the product. Um, and they're basically promoting it as like this is a this is for gaming and like movie watching. And I think that's fine. Like they, they weren't like doing what Apple was trying to do. Where, like, they're trying to claim that this is going to be, like, how you comp- do that. This is just how it's going to be in the future. This is how you're going to do computer work in the future. You're going to live your life in this device. I, I want to push that back. I don't think Apple was ever advocating for that. They had to sell this fucking thing. That's just the way they. I think it was the worst sale they could possibly. Well, make. they're not. Well, they're not promoting. In fact, they're push. They, they are pulling. They pulled back on any sort of promoting on the real use cases for this thing, at least right now in the current world we live in, and that's gaming. Like, they refused to promote this as a gaming device because they didn't want it to be in that same sort of category as, like, you know, the Meta Oculus, whatever the hell they're calling it now, the Metas, and then these other companies, like the Real Glasses I I mentioned. They were, like, adamant about it not being pegged as a gaming device, and to me, it's like... That's that's the use case for these right now. That and I actually like you disagree. Said. What they should well, I don't think they did some gaming stuff on it, but I think one of the reasons they didn't do too much is they couldn't get the buy-in from them. If Apple was actually smart, what they would say is, okay, this is the best television in your house. This is the way you will consume visual media going forward. It's too expensive. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Oh. Wheeled him a cat there. Um, <laughs> so what you get for being up my ass all day? Um, they would have fought, like focused heavily on the on the entertainment side. They didn't because they don't think they got the buy-in. But had what they should have done was say, okay, PlayStation, Xbox, we have all of the remote play, kind of like back, you know, the backbone, the thing that clicks onto your phone that you can use remote play. They right. should have had. Oh my god, there's some horrible thing now if you do... What did you just do? I just did something with my hands. I never want that to happen again. How embarrassing. (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> for people listening so, to the podcast, you heard. I was going to say this before when you said, "There's my cat's asshole." I wanted to let people know who listened to the podcast that that wasn't some sort of uh, English expression. That was actually <laughs> I showed my cat's asshole. <laughs> yes. um, but no, that. So, but what you're talking about here was you just did some like hand movement and hand movement, Sky- and it Skype did, like, gave you like confetti or something. Yeah. What the hell? That's horrible. <laughs> Um, but I think had Apple, Apple should have just been like, this is the best entertainment device in your home. You can do word processing on it. It can, it is a big spatial desktop. This is cool. They shouldn't have showed people walking around. That was a mistake. No one would, I would never use this in a room with another person. I'd feel weird. <laughs> I feel very strange. Wouldn't like it. Like ran fiance, put it on and I immediately felt guilty. But they should have just really heavily focused themselves on building this out as an entertainment thing to start with, because that would the that would be the easiest thing to do, instead of trying to make it something for everyone. Because the entertainment stuff on it is absolutely banging. It really is cool. It's really great. I genuinely I have watched movies on this and been like genuinely astounded. Like I'm pretty hard to impress, and I've just been like, wow, this is actually really cool. And then I get a headache, and I think that might have been the darkness thing. But it's just, it's just very silly because they've there were so many open goals they had that they just missed, and I, I just I think it's part of a larger technological problem, a larger problem in the entire tech industry. It goes to AI, it goes to crypto, with all this, which is I don't think any of the people in charge actually do human things. I don't think they interact with regular people. I don't think they understand what regular people do. I don't think they realize that regular people don't want to do Spatial Fruit Ninja. They want to do big screen PlayStation. They want to watch movies. They want to stream their games. Right. right. And it's like... I don't... I, uh, I, I'm i shocked that, you know, the, the, the this generation doesn't want a giant Word document in front of their face. <laughs> but it's the thing. Apple pages and numbers that they could touch. They don't want to... <laughs> but it's not even that, and it's they should have sold it as a as a new kind of screen, but they're fucking stupid. They're just I don't think any of these people speak to real people anymore. Why else would everyone be so angry about this thing? Yeah, yeah. I I also think that the the early adopters who were out there doing their videos didn't help things for Apple. I know that's out of Apple's hands, but a lot of them out there with their uh, Apple Vision Pro in like the car drive while driving the car while on the subway while getting married. None of those were real. All of those videos were fake. Right, right, right. Every but single I, one of them. But it was, I think it was very bad uh, press for Apple Vision Pro. You don't want uh, to peg the device as, oh, you own this and you're one of those guys, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just find it very annoying because you can really see where it could go. And you can see that they have no interest in speeding that up. They're just kind of like, well, you fucking bought it now, dickhead. Enjoy watching what for all mankind. I don't know what that show is. It's just like it, they even had a PS5 controller in the commercial. That's what really angered me. I just want to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on this thing. I'd be so happy. Apple, I'll write whatever the fuck you want. Please give me PS5 remote. I don't know. Right, it's bitter. Right. Well, let's let's uh, let's actually, if if you have some more time, spend just a few moments, because uh, we we talked a lot about crypto in the beginning. Makes sense. This is scam economy, mm-hmm. but more than I thought we were going to. Uh, do you have a few more minutes to talk a little bit about AI hype site? The AI I do. hype I have, cycle. I have a little bit of time. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. So, um, you know, I feel like you actually talk about this a lot more in your newsletter than you have so far in your podcast, but your podcast is just launched. So, I mean, I'm sure you'll get there, but your newsletter, you've been really on the AI hype, uh, beat, uh, and everyone can find that at it's, it's where's your ed dot at, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I knew I remembered it correctly. Um, so what, what is your feelings about, um, the, this AI hype cycle? Cause I've, you know, I've, I've, explained to people who listen to this show where I am on AI, how it's clearly not crypto in the sense that there are use cases for AI. However, the same hype around it 
of try, you know people trying to sell it as something it is not, how it's going to replace everything. I mean, I even hate that name AI for this. It's not artificial intelligence. It's just not. These are language models um, that pull data off the internet and other data points and basically are sort of sometimes pretty good at making it sound, making all this, like, uh, taking all the stuff and making it sound human based on what you ask it. It also fucks up a lot of the time. Um, generative AI content, like uh, uh, AI created quote unquote art, photos, videos, uh, just basically takes the data it's trained on and just figures out uh, based on what the person's asking for, how to give it to them, but also by stealing a lot from the artists that it was trained on. Like this isn't something really all that smart. A lot of it is actually sort of automation, which we've had on the internet for, for actually, you know, decades before this whole AI was even a, a thing in this, you know, this current hype bubble we're in with it. I mean, you say there are use cases. What are those? Because that's the thing. We've had ChatGPT for over a year now. And let me tell you something. I cannot tell you why I'd use it. And I'm an idiot. I will go and fuck with things for hours for no reason. I will find the fun. Can't find it with ChatGPT. ChatGPT, the most common thing I've found with it is that it will not do the things I need it to do. I will ask it to do boring, boring document work. It can't do it. Oh, you're not using the right prompts. Fuck you. That's not my problem. This should work. This should work easy. But the biggest thing is, right now, generative AI is a fun doodad, but there are no real use cases. Oh, I have heard, I have had, I have heard from quite a few, uh, you know, developers and programmers that they are able to save time by getting it to output, um, you know, like a, a a a base code. I'm not a programmer, so I don't know the extra exact terminology, but they're able to save some time by getting down the base level stuff for when they need to code a certain app or, you know, feature on a larger product. So I've heard it's a time saving mechanism. Auto complete. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean though, where there are some use cases, but which is unlike crypto, but uh, it's it's nowhere near this like life changing, you know, workers are going to lose their job level. I mean, workers will lose their job based on the hype, but they actually won't be replaced by anything that can take over the job they were actually doing. Um, you know. I don't think that people realize how perfect humanity is and how the prevalence of hallucinations will kill this so fast. Everyone was losing their shit over Sora, the AI-generated video product from OpenAI. You'll notice, by the way, that they've yet to open that up to everyone, probably because it's insanely expensive to do. But also, what it creates is horrifying. It's great if you are one of the many tech guys that look down at their phone while watching TV. But when you actually expect it to create something that doesn't look like a Lovecraftian horror... It doesn't look great. And these people are saying, well, this is the early days. In five years or two years or one year, it will be better. The problem is that the world around us does not have hallucinations. If I am watching a video and I see a guy has six, seven, eight fingers, or if I see a cat has a third leg that pops out, even if that minuscule detail is off, that will make me feel upset and it will make viewers feel upset as well. On top there of that- There better be a storyline reason for that cat to have eight, <laughs> eight legs, otherwise it's out, yeah. But also, you'll notice this, despite all of this prompt generation stuff, even if you somehow perfected it, you can't edit, edit any of this shit. You can't change anything in it. Same way you can't really edit any of the AI generated images. And you'll notice that they still haven't worked out how to make AI generated images do text properly. That is the hard limit. The hard limit is math. Because the big thing I always say is artificial intelligence is not intelligent. It does not know anything. It right. does not know that a monkey has four legs. Oh, sorry. Right. Two arms, two legs. Pardon me. I'm turning into a generative Are you, AI. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Sorry, I'm only placed. coming on. I don't know what a monkey is. But it doesn't know that. What it does is it knows what is tagged as monkey in its data set. And then it puts together a composite of what a monkey would look like. As a result, it will mess things up because it doesn't know. It doesn't know what a monkey looks like. It just knows what it is told and what it has been trained on. 
these things can until they reach AGI average general intelligence which would allow them to think for itself these things will be hard capped in their capacity to do things and I don't think people realize how big a deal that is and also that we're not at the beginning this is like 20 years of AI work that has got us to this point we're at the top of the S curve these magical new things keep popping up before Sora, there was a company called Pika that came out a few months beforehand. Their demos, their demos looked so good, and then you actually used it, and it was such so, so bad. It right. was so shit. I tried you to know, get it to do like a raccoon with a gun, and it could not get a raccoon to happen. One one of the more amazing things too is like they'll they'll say like, oh, we just typed in like this sentence like. Uh, Oh, woman walking down the street and look at this amazing thing that like this generative AI came up with. But it's like, hold on. The use case for this, like in terms yeah, of like it actually it comes down to use cases and the use case for this, though, in terms of it actually being revolutionary or whatever in, in your in, in the AI uh, industry scenario is like, oh, this replaces like uh, uh, filmmakers or actors. But like if you're a filmmaker, like. You're very specific in what shot you need. Yes. So if it's if it's adding its own creativity to just give you whatever the hell the the the, the 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 you know the output of that specific data point it grabbed at that moment in time and gives you that, like the AI people may think it's amazing how it thought up you know it not, they didn't think anything. It's amazing that it you know came up with this all by itself from a simple output. But it's like that's also really bad because people also who would imprecise. Yes. People who would actually use this to create something, like a filmmaker, if they were to ever use this, want something really specific for their script or storyline. And if this thing is making up its own shit based on the data point that's grabbing at that exact moment, then it, it can't even be used for that. <laughs> and what's insane is the argument is always it's early days. It's always like, well, it, it will be more precise in the future. No, it won't. Text is relatively easy. And they still can't do that right. It still hallucinates. And I saw a Wall Street Journal article made me laugh. And it was like, yeah, open AI and Anthropic moving forward with plans to sell into the enterprise despite hallucination problems. And the only idea they had for dealing with hallucinations was to limit the willingness of the generative AI to generate answers. They were just like, well, if we tell it to not answer when it's not confident, it won't give a hallucination. But then someone else was quoted as saying, yeah, but if we do that, it won't answer at all. It'll just start saying, I, I don't, I, I, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, not for me, thanks. And it's just really funny because I think the wheels are coming off this stuff. I think people are realizing that while there are apps that have integrated AI that are kind of cool, there are consumer apps that you can automate certain customer service things with that's kind of cool none of this is backing up the massive amounts of money that have to be spent to keep doing this generative ai the funny thing is you mentioned the customer service thing and um i was reading a story recently that i forget what airline um some airline use was using an ai chatbot to do customer service that was before generative ai that was 2022 no, no, this was recently. No, no, no. The, no, no the, oh, the lawsuit the, was recently. The oh, okay. lawsuit was recently settled. Okay. That one was. However, I've got. Don't worry, I've got an anecdote for you. There was a British firm called DPD, I believe, that did a generative AI chatbot, and someone convinced it to do a song about no, a poem about how shit DPD was, and they managed to make it swear, and they had to take it down immediately. It's so cool. It's so cool. This shit keeps happening as well. It's. It's driving me a little insane, kind of like crypto, because you're kind of like, ah, oh, well, you know, ah, uh, what does this do long term, though? What is right. the actual use case? And people are just like, automation. Right. I mean, to me, the to me, the the concern here for this, in you know, the in terms of like the equivalent concerns I had with crypto, here my concern is is that people are believing the the hype. And they think this thing is actual artificial intelligence. Like you see people like, you know, get mad about certain output as if like, 
oh, the this is dangerous. Like Elon Musk constantly does this. Oh, it won't say it's okay to misgender someone if it's gonna, oh, the, you know, no, no, save. Yeah, Google Gemini has said that uh, Ch- uh, George Washington was Chinese. That's very woke. I don't like that. Yes, it's, but it's like so the, the, funny. The, the, the thing is, they think. Like, and I don't know if Musk himself actually thinks this, but at least his fan base thinks that, like, oh, like, this intelligent robot was programmed to actually believe that George Washington was Chinese or whatever. But that's not what's happening at all. The thing is just so stupid because it's not artificial intelligence. It's just grabbing data points, you know, mangling it all together, and just spitting out whatever just to, with, the, with the intent of at least sounding like a human is writing the sentence without actually any concern for what is actually in the content of those sentences. And that's what you get. This isn't dangerous because there's no thinking behind it. There's well, no it intelligence is, it behind it. It is dangerous, it. but not in the way people think. Right. It's yes. actually very yes. dangerous for generating a lot of crap and for generating spam and for generating scams. Voice cloning is very bad fucking news. Well, there's or, there, those. See, those are the use cases to worry about. The much online, like crypto, the biggest right. use case is crime, scams, misinformation. That's going to be big once it, it's. I mean, it's already there, but once you know people start really outputting it to like put politicians in um, you know different situations. I know there was this story just uh, earlier this month about a generative AI Joe Biden voice used for robocalls in New Hampshire, where he was. Where the AI Joe Biden, without letting people know, was AI Joe Biden. It was presenting itself as the real Joe Biden, like a a real campaign message from him, calling New Hampshire voters, telling them, "Oh, don't go out and vote in the primaries. You got to save your vote for the general election," which doesn't make any sense. But you know, common people might not know or understand. They're not in this political bubble, this tech bubble that certain people are in, like you and I are in, so they don't get it. Um, you know, and, you know, I don't really care about Joe Biden and the New Hampshire primary, but that was a, you know, a, a test case, a, a, a sneak preview as to the horrors that are to come. And even then, I think that there is a hard limit. I think that the voice cloning stuff could be very scary, but also the actual amount of effort you'd have to go to. It's going to allow certain people to do specific kinds of crime quite well. But even then, there is going to be a hard limit on it because even if you're using 11 labs to clone someone's voice, there is a fucking paper trail. You right. can't do a hard copy of that. I mean, you probably can, but still, it's not oh, as actually, easy as... They, they've been pretty good at finding the more viral cases of people misusing those voices and like finding out exactly which account they had on 11 labs and shutting them down. So I will, I'll, you know, I will hand them that they've been pretty proactive on that level. But, um, yeah, I mean, there is that paper trail, like you said, much, much like crypto where people think that they can just do whatever they want. And, uh, you know, there'll be no paper trail when there absolutely is a paper trail. I don't know. It's just, if AI was doing what it's doing right now and it wasn't, costing the moon to do so i would be a lot less cynical but there is just billions of dollars sloshing into new data centers into the amount of energy and compute needed to do this and then you're like what does it actually do what is the actual end point you can i can tell you what siri can do it can misunderstand me three times and then do what i want it to like play music sometimes if it understands maybe they'll improve siri with generative ai Great, cool. Note that Alexa and Siri and all those things have very rarely made... In fact, Alexa lost a lot of money for for Amazon. Most AI things have not made any money. The difference is we haven't been spinning up new data centers and throwing entire zoos worth of animals into a fire to build the power necessary to keep these things going. And they're going to keep spending money. And on top of that... All of these companies are ultimately beholden to the bigger tech entities. Microsoft invested $10 billion in OpenAI. Most of that money was done in cloud credits, which will then funnel right back into Microsoft as revenue. Same deal with Anthropic. Google put two, three billion in, and mysteriously around that time, Anthropic agreed to use Google Cloud as their exclusive platform. 
So yeah, the big tech companies want to push AI because they want every startup to integrate Claude or ChatGPT so that they're able to funnel that money right back up their own assholes. The only reason that this is being done is to make more money for the tech ecosystem. They didn't come up with a use case. They're just trying to push it through. Anyone see the Super Bowl ad for Copilot? Realize no, maybe I, you can respond. I actually did not see that though. But uh... so there was there was a minute long commercial for Microsoft Copilot, and one of the things in there was it was like classic logo for Mike's trucks, or like oh, I Mike's I truck one. repair. I about it. And you yeah, go ahead. and it and three of the logos successfully said Mike. So let me tell you, when you actually type that in, the result is it's like Ikes. It's like they can't do right. writing correctly. Another one of the things they did was like write the code for my 3D open world game. The fuck is that gonna what? What does that what does that command do? Like actually I wonder what that command does. I've got to look that up. But that's the <laughs> thing. Like that's the case. thing though. It's right. like they couldn't even for a seven million dollar commercial during the Super Bowl, they could not come up with a use case. Yeah, well, Mike's got a, a logo, I guess. That even even though the uh, output does might not be, look might vary. like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like that's the thing. They just lied. They just lied. They just lied. There's nothing coming out of it that's useful. And they, this is the future. This is the future, baby. This is the new thing. What does it do? I don't know, and neither do we. Like I don't fucking know. I'm Sachin and Della. I gotta make billions of dollars for Microsoft. There was one. It was like generate storyboard images for the dragon scene in my script dot 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 and it generates all these pictures now i'm not sure what that would actually do but let's type it in. uh generate storyboard images for the dragon scene in my script dot dot mm. dot enter let's see and what's going to come out of it i'll try to create that and now i have to sign in okay, i'm signed in I need to type this in. Generate storyboard images for the dragon <laughs> scene in my script. Dot, I'm dot, actually dot. very interested in seeing what it does. And uh -huh. it did. It generated dragon scene storyboard, and it's still it's just generating gener generic stuff. Yeah. Wow. It generated a storyboard, all right, for. I wonder, can I share this with you, Matt? Could you put this? Yeah, drop it. If in, yeah, in, let, in let the me just Skype drop it in the chat. And I'll throw it up the on chat. the feed. This is what for came out of it. Video. This is what came out of it. All right, let's see. So I guess that this would generate. I guess All that right. this is. <laughs> write code for my open world. So this is this is the output photo wise of the storyboards. You know, here's the again, this is the issue that I um that I mentioned earlier. Like if you have a very specific like you 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 didn't give it specifics, yet it somehow came up with very specific storyboards. Like there are certain types of people in there in certain dress, like the type of you know, <laughs> medieval fashion they're wearing or whatever. The number of dragons, like you didn't give them this information, yet it made it up. I'm like, laughing because I typed in write code for my 3D open world game, which is the exact text from the commercial, and it is currently writing a what looks like a plan for a game. Oh, that's not what you it's asked it for. Number that's... one, conceptualize your game, define the theme, setting, and gameplay mechanics. Number two, choose a game engine. This was a seven million dollar commercial showed to millions of people. This isn't code. This is trying to make me look at Unity's beginning 3D game development course. This is actually what pisses me off about the tech press. This should be the actual news. It shouldn't be that Microsoft had a commercial. It shouldn't be that Copilot exists. It should be that Microsoft is fucking lying. That they are spending money to lie to you. You are being lied to. They are liars. But no, no one gives a shit. No one fucking cares. Also, what's interesting with this dragon picture is I don't appear to be able to zoom in on it or download it. So it's just like, I just have like a very low resolution series of pictures that I can't export in any way. That's cool. I'm so glad that I use Microsoft Copilot to do this. This will help me with my dragon plot. 
Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, what am I meant to do with this shit? What am I meant to do here? Why am I the one who's saying this stuff? There should be other people. I'm not a journalist. I'm a blogger. I run a PR firm. I've got other shit to do. But this feels like the base journalism that people should be doing. But they're like, no, AI's the future. McKinsey should be fucking happy. They've got a new thing to sell reports on. But here... You know what? I actually do kind of feel like I did with the crypto stuff. I actually do. Because now I feel insane. Now I feel insane about this. I feel like a crazy person drinking crazy juice. I just write code for my open three. I thought it was going to try and build code there. I thought it would at least fudge together some code. I just yeah, that's I, pr- that's pretty uh, bad. I thought it would at least uh, attempt. I thought it was going to give me some weird shit. shitty yeah. code. Yeah, like just like some um, like I don't know anything about coding. Like would I compile that somewhere? I don't know. It, it's <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going in, I'm going insane in real time now. I really hey, thought that that would bill- generate billion- code. I really thought the code would come out. I really thought it's just in, it feels like we're being laughed at. Right. We even thought we even thought better of it just now. As people who are very skeptical, we thought it would at least <laughs> give you something that would resemble because you know that's what I was talking about before. How it's really good at. Um, formulating sentences that sound human, even if the content isn't good. So you would assume that if that's what it's very good at, it would have given you code, even if the code was a bunch of gibberish. It would try to at least make it look like code. Like, so you, like, if you were in a movie pretending to be, like, you were an actor in a movie playing a computer hacker, you could throw this up on the screen so it looks like you're hacking the system. Yeah, it would probably be, like, useful code. (laughs) But But you can't even do that. You can't even do that. Even then, I don't know what I expected because how would it possibly know anything that I'm saying? It doesn't know what 3D world, open world game I'm building. Yeah. And also, this is a public company. Yeah. Are they allowed to just fucking lie? I guess they are. I guess that that's what we do. Arr. Well, uh, it's always good to come on here. I was like, my brain always feels like uh, I always get a little bit of special kind of mad. I miss this. I miss coming I, on here. I, I, I miss having you on again. I didn't realize how long it's been. We can't make it uh, that happen again. You have to come on much I'm sooner. I'm always game. I'm always All right, game, so, man. So, sounds good. We'll definitely have to do this again real soon. Um, I love how we sort of went off the rails here at the end, just trying out different. <laughs> <laughs> different uh basic journalism these... yeah that's what yeah. it's called i right. we reported the news to quote the right. newsroom oh man well ed zitron like we were just been talking about it's been an absolute pleasure we cannot wait another year to have you on this show you won't have to let everybody know because you got so much going on now um let everybody know all the things you'd like to promote i know there's the newsletter the podcast. I don't know if there's anything else you're doing, but if there is, let them know. Right uh, here, the floor is yours. So Go ahead. Betteroffline.com. You can find basically everything. I bought that domain name and I pointed everything to it. Where's your at? Where's your ed dot at? Jesus Christ. You need to get that one right. And I dropped those actually into the chat just now as well. So people Perfect. can just, just copy paste it. No, I love coming on here. It's always good. It's, always. It's, it's, and all, this know. was the show when I predicted that Voyager would collapse. Yes, if you remember, like a few months yes. before Voyager fell apart. Yeah, oh, yeah. baby. We, we, <laughs> things things are always happening on here, and uh, things are always happening now over on uh, Better Offline too. That's right. I, uh, what's your next episode going to be about? Can you give us a little sneak preview? Uh, it comes out tomorrow. Actually, it's going to be oh. about what the hell happened with the metaverse. So, if you're listening to the podcast version of the show, by the time you're listening to this, it's going to be out already. So, go check it out. Uh, and we also have some really cool episodes coming up. We have a sequel to The Rot Economy that we worked on, just recorded that yesterday. And on this Friday, I'm recording with Molly White. We're going to do an episode on what the hell Wikipedia is. Ah. I feel it's one of those things where I feel like a lot of people use Wikipedia without knowing how it actually works. And I right. feel like that might be really interesting. And Molly is a very dynamic and interesting person to talk to. Absolutely. Agree on all accounts. Also, Wikipedia is like the last... One of the last good things on the internet. Like, it's it's a real throwback to how the internet should be. It's good that it's uh, re- remained as popular and important as it is. Because um, 
it's you know the perfect word for what we've been seeing. Everything we talked about on this show, uh, the enshittification of uh, everything online. It's really depressing to see. Um, I, I, I there there is I I, I have a, I don't know if I should even call it hope, but I'm interested in diving a little bit into what Google announced. Uh, today, March 5th, 2024, in terms of how it's going to uh, really start cracking down on... Uh, for uh, you, those of you on the on the podcast, you can't see me doing the jack-off gesture. Right, right. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how they implement it. But they said they are going with the, the next search update. They are going to really crack down on these bulk AI for SEO purposes, uh, like a, a content garbage you'll see it all over the place just mounds of keyword stuffed seo so, so ai I, generated content it's just it's been so not to leave you on a depressing note but let me read you a headline sure Go google promises to adjust search algorithm to favor people first content in a major shift google plans to reverse revise its search algorithm to rank content crafted primarily for people rather than content designed to impress web crawls and indexing bots you want to know when that was from August 2022. There we go. Google oh, has been promising right. this shit forever. And I think everyone bought it hook, line, and sinker. You could bring me back in a month, which is when they say the Google thing will have happened. Right. I would love to be wrong. I doubt I will be. All right. Well, may maybe the one thing different here that I can consider is that back in 2022, maybe Google still thought they could win the AI race. Now, in 2024, they're like, we're not winning this shit. Our AI has been a, a, at least a public failure in, a, you know, from people using it and, and sharing how bad it's been. Uh, maybe we should, if, if, we can't, if we can't join them, then we got we to gotta gotta beat them. Right? <laughs> By just downranking all this shit. It's all terrible. Well, we will see. Right. Right. Well, Ed... You'll be back on this show to, uh, oh, I get, will be. to you talk won't get about rid of me that easy. To, to talk about this. We'll have to check it out. Uh, Ed Zitron, right. everyone. Check out Where's Your Ed At, the newsletter. Uh, check out Better Offline, the podcast. And uh, you can find Ed Zitron on uh, all social media platforms still, I assume. Just uh, search Ed Zitron. It's probably, you're, you're, still, you're, you're on Twitter Ed slash Zitron X. on RateMyNudes.biz, a.k.a. X. <laughs> <laughs> and zitron dot b sky dot social. One of my one of my favorite things that you do really quick is you screenshot every bad Twitter ad you see, and they're just oh, so yeah. bad. And you show. See, I don't actually see that many ads on there because <laughs> one of the accidental benefits of being punished with the blue check mark is I don't see that many ads. But you do. <laughs> The ads you're seeing are actually the worst. It's they're not even ads. They're not even advertising anything. It's Just like gave you one to share. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, <laughs> let me pull this up. Oh my god, so so bad. Here, let me. Uh... This is an ad that someone paid for. Okay, so this is <laughs> Vanessa, a blue check mark on Twitter with an a paid advertisement. Her. Uh, her Twitter name is at IV Bidden underscore fruit. Complete nonsense. Obviously a auto-generated bot or something like that. And this paid ad is simply, hello there, I like coffee. <laughs> this is the future. You know, what is, maybe it's a, it's purposely bad to get people to go to her, her profile and see what her, I think it Her is an is? overwhelming scam system. I think, I actually think that there might be something very weird happening here. Because that account, by the way, is already suspended. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Then, then that, it's not whatever I thought it was. Because, yeah, that but also, is Also, isn't it very weird that Twitter is getting advertisements being bought by people who are immediately suspended? Oh, yeah. I, I think it, and I, I forgot where I read this. I think it was the information reported it earlier uh, last month, actually. Um, apparently, there, well, I, I forgot exactly what's in the report. People should go check it out. But there has been a uptick in people stealing credit cards and then running random Twitter ads 
using those credit cards. And I think, if I recall correctly, the information the report said that these scammers who would steal these cards were like using Twitter ads to test if the cards worked or something like that. I, I can't recall exactly the whole story. We'll have to go back and check it out. But that must be a part of why we're seeing these garbage ads. I, I, don't, I don't know what the other reasons could be, honestly. I don't know, and I'm too tired to imagine why now. <laughs> All right, Ed. I'm not too mad. Have a great night. This was fantastic, and Thank I will you so uh, much. talk to you soon. Take care. Cheers. All right, folks. Let's go to the uh, – we're going to go – if you're watching live, I should say, we are going to continue with the show and take calls and questions via Super Chat – uh, so don't go anywhere, but if you're listening uh, via podcast, uh, and you just wanted to check out the Ed Zitron interview, uh, either of those things is completely fine. I, I get it. I get it. If you don't just don't want to listen to me and, uh, the callers, but, uh, if you just were here for that, then, uh, this is where I say, uh, I'll see you all next time before I go, please. Uh, if you'd like to support this show, go to patreon.com slash Matt Binder and become a monthly paying subscriber. What does that get you? It just really supports all the work I do. I do live streams every week, multiple live streams every week. Um, you know, if you're a scam economy only listener, you may be like, oh, I don't see the feed always updating. There's been a bit of a lull on the scam economy podcast feed in terms of scam economy specific episodes. I'm hoping to ramp that back up. I know I said that the last episode, but I'm hoping to ramp that back up, um, especially right now with everything going on. Um, but I do live streams every week about news, politics, and tech. I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, Twitter episodes on my recent Twitter reporting, uh, so definitely check those out. Uh, I think I even uploaded one of them to the Scam Economy feed about the, uh, the uh, Twitter monetization scheme uh, with Mr. Beast. So you guys might have already heard that one. There's been others that haven't been uploaded to the Scam Economy feed. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on doing even more, much like Ed. I'll be launching a newsletter really soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. So if you'd like to support all that I do there, patreon.com slash Matt Binder. You could also support this show by going to youtube.com slash Matt Binder and uh, following me there. Uh, you could also become a paying member there. If you are enjoying the content and want to give a one-off, like a little monetary fee to me, you can drop a super chat, and I will read all the super chats on the call-in portion of the show as well. Uh, you could also follow me at twitch.tv slash I multi-stream there. And if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you get a free Twitch Prime subscription every week. What is Every month, I should say. What does that do for you? Uh, basically, you get to give your favorite Twitch creator once a month, a paid subscription that costs you nothing more than what you're already paying Amazon for your entire Amazon Prime subscription. By not doing that, I don't care if you give it to me, actually. I prefer you give it to me, but if you want to give it to someone else you enjoy on Twitch, please do that. Because by not using your Twitch Prime subscription every month, you're basically letting Amazon keep more of your Twitch Prime subscription fees. You, you could force them to give a little bit of that to someone who creates on Twitch every month. So go do that if you're paying for Amazon Prime. Uh, you could also go to uh, scameconomy.com for the podcast version of this show. It's also available at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and on Spotify uh, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, and if you can review this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, that would be great too. With all that said, uh, if you are not sticking around or tuning in to the call-in portion of the program, you're just listening to the podcast, just listening to the Ed Zitron interview, this is where I tell you that I will see you all next time on the Scam Economy. Welcome to the Scam Economy with your host, Matt Bender.
Optical collapse. Corporate fashion. Corporate journalism. All right, we are back. This is the call-in portion of the show. How are you all doing tonight? Uh, it is... It is uh, Super Tuesday. I hope I gave you guys something different, honestly, than what everyone else is co talking about today. You know, obviously, this is it, that was a Scam Economy episode, so not really different for that audience and that podcast. I mean, it's exactly what we talk about on that podcast. Uh, and Edzitron is obviously great. But in terms of the live stream viewers right now, I hope I gave you something a little bit different because we really don't need to spend more time on talking about politics on, you don't need another podcast, I should say, or another stream talking about politics on Super Tuesday. Although we can talk about it, um, we absolutely can talk about it. So if you're calling in to talk about it, that's fine. But I didn't want to spend the whole stream on just talking Super Tuesday, especially when it's not a competitive Super Tuesday. I mean, I don't want to spend time on the horse race when there's not even a, a race going on. We don't need to see a bunch of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, studs trotting around, showing off. <laughs> I think I used the proper horse term for like the upper echelon of horses, right? Oh, we already got calls coming in. Let's take some calls. You could call on Skype at Doomed Live. Just search Doomed Live. You call into the show. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Studs. Yes. Oh, Turn it's... down your. Oh. Hello? Javier Miche, president of the pharma country. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got to, Javier, you got to turn down the, uh, you got to turn down the feed because all I hear is myself. Oh, that must have appealed to you, commies, as but you're I, so self-centered. I, I am self-centered, but when I'm trying to do a show, hearing myself is actually uh, exactly the opposite of what I want to do. <laughs> so what do you want? Uh, that this sounds is... like your uh, communist uh, economy as well. So this is for everyone who's not uh, familiar. This is and the, oh, this is the don't, president. Don't spoil the immersion. And this is the president of Argentina on the line right now. Wow. Yes, Javier, how are you? How are you doing? I what thought I thought it was fitting to call in during Scan Economy. I feel so represented oh, oh. by the <laughs> by the lack of ethics. Right. Yes. Yes. How, so how are things going over there? Last I heard, not good. Not good at all. Depends on whom. For me, it's perfect. For for you, yes, going very well. I guess for everybody else, not so great. Uh, well, basically, now they're comparing me to Triumph the Insult comic dog. That's an insult. So, uh, basically, with uh, with the econ with the economics currently, now people can walk to work if they have work anymore. And that makes them exercise. So that's good for their health. All right. <laughs> so um, what did you think of the, uh, the, what do you think about this Bitcoin pump? I know you're, you're sort of a crypto fan. Is that right? Yes, but currently I'm more, more uh, trying to uh, convert uh, the, the, the Argentinian oh. pest. Oh, you're you're breaking up for me. You're breaking up for me, What's my wrong? friend. You're breaking. All right, I think that's fixed now. What were you oh, saying? Oh, that's because I. Yes, I I've been like uh, cutting the, the, the internet access for my country. I didn't know it was good. I don't have to. Uh... It's an Argentinian accent, boludo. Stop interrupting me, chat. Hello, my pre my precious awful chat. How are you doing? 
Yes, so I, as I was saying, uh, I was going to ask, uh, what did you think of my presence in Davos? I did not see it actually. How? What? What did you do? What? What happened? What, what's? Give me the. Give me the skinny. Well, basic. What is skinny? What is this is skinny? Give me the scoop. The scoop. <laughs> scoop. Well, <laughs> you said you're 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 also you're you're kind of. I saw someone in the chat say this. You're st- kind of uh, heading into a triumph territory. Triumph the dog, like the Conan O'Brien character. It no, sounds like any a... second, any second, you're gonna go uh, for me to poop. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is an Argentinian accent, boludo. You call me bastard. Uh, the Argentinian accent requires you have this like gruff, gravelly voice. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, we're losing him. Hello, hello. Yes. Oh, we lost you for a second. Continue. Yeah. Continue. Yes, I've I've lost I've lost myself for quite a while, as my opponents say. Uh, so so basically, uh, uh, what I did was because nobody knows about like anti-communism as I do, because I am a I'm an expert on this kind of thing. So what I did was I tried to comment about how. Uh, uh, centralized economy it gets the uh, uh, ruins the chance of a liberty, the liberty of poverty in uh, throughout the world. So I, I had to make a big alert about being careful about uh, communism in China, Vietnam, and Cuba. Mm. Yes, people were very, very proud of myself being like a, a sort of a, a performance artist. Okay. Interesting. Yes, Bannon, <laughs> I admire Ban- Bannon's energy, but he's Mr. L- LH, but I think he's, well, he's crazy like me, but I think he's uh, too much of a, an anti-Semite. I'm oh, lately... Oh, you're big. You're, you, didn't, you, didn't you convert to Judaism or was that just all talk? It's a bit like I'm trying to be like Bob Dylan. I'm trying to be like Jewish and Catholic at the same time and insulting the Pope. Oh, welcome, welcome to the Israel. club. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yes, I'm, unfortunately, I'm trying to be you. But this is where, this smart, is where you and me actually have money. some... Uh, this is where you and me have a lot in common, actually. <laughs> yes, unfor- unfortunately. Except this is uh, I'm trying to be this way, become this way. With the Kabbalah, I don't think you believe in the Kabbalah. No, You're... see, with with me, with me, I'm I'm Jewish, I'm Catholic, but I'm also I don't believe in any of it. I know you're. That's not you. That's not you. You are. Well, you, you you believe in a little bit of a, every, all of it, right? <laughs> no, basically, I believe in capitalism. This is my that's kind true. Of a, that's true. This is this is kind of my uh, sort of uh, mythology. Instead of uh, Zeus coming from the mountain, it would be like this golden uh, rain showering over everybody. Right. So how was how was CPAC, I should ask? Well, I was a bit jealous because I wanted to become uh, president of the United States. But no, it was know, good you, because... You know you, know, you know, you can't do that. But I want to. Just like I, I, people I, I, told I mean... me... That I couldn't be president of Argentina. No, but I like just, that's because they thought you couldn't win. I just clapped my heels. Right, but this is a little bit different. This is the actual. And you immersion, can't. Not... Immersion, immersion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Javier. This was. Uh, yes. This was oh, a yes. lot of fun. Become, this was a lot of fun. I become an insult now. No, I don't have a girlfriend, so I'm open up to, shall we say, if anyone in the chat wants to offer themselves, especially if they have a certain uh, chat GBT script for uh, incels. All right. Okay, I'll call later uh, then because have a, we haven't talked have a, in a while. Have a, have a, this was great. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, have a great night, uh, Javier, and uh, I good, f- luck, I feel good luck in Argentina. I feel honored. 
Let's uh, let's let's let's. Bad uh, luck if, for Argentina, you mean? The yes. Argentina. Yeah. Uh, let's say this though. Let's um. If, the Republic I have of fifty percent off. Let's 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 re let's let's refund a lot of those things that you uh basically just shut down. That's really hurting the people in Argentina. Let's can, can we do that? At least some of it. Can we do that? Will I have you on the line? Mm, I think I, what I want to do is uh. <laughs> I think we're gonna go. I think not. Nice to to... <laughs> yes. <laughs> turn, the, turn the economy it's over to Jeff Bezos. It's terrible. You, the, you would really. know what to do with it. Especially on the arts, I think I would do with the arts uh, only NFTs. It would be like NFTs oh instead of. Oh yes. boy! All right. The Ministry of NFTs. All right, Javier. Have a great night. Always a pleasure when you call in. Feel free to call back in uh, anytime. Ooh, they didn't even say bye to me. Wow, someone was upset. I got another call coming in right oh, well, now. All right. I got hey, you. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Jason in Los Angeles. Hey, my... Jason from Los Angeles. What let me put my mic about? on. Let me, let me put my stuff on here. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, oh, hey, I just love the show. Uh, oh, can I pull you up? Uh, you just, I just yeah, said you, you have your on. video. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, go cool, ahead, cool. Blend it, blend it. You know, don't, don't all right, there you are. Over there. What would you all talk right. about? Well, they can see me, but I can't see myself. That's all this. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I was I was uh, talking about the crypto thing, and I, I uh, you know I'm on the uh, Wall Street bets forum thing. You know, always having fun, fun over yeah. there. And I put a I put a comment. I was like, everybody knows like the money that's in, like uh, Wall Street bets is just the money that's sloshing around it. It's just what Coinbase decides is the price. Like, there's no you know with like stocks and stuff. There's like price discovery. There's supply demand. There's computers right. that all control all that. Well, not not that, really coin. Not really any solo. Well, the, some of the bigger exchange probably. No, right. I mean, I'm sure they have some role. sort of right. like algorithm right. stuff that they they, right. they got approved to the SEC and all that stuff. But like, what what I'm saying is is like, Coinbase is like cash on hand is like five billion. And I put like a graph of like the top wallets that are just like out there. And there's like maybe a thousand wallets with like 400 billion and you can count like china russia and america like like the wallets that they've seized from that but that's only four wallets there's still like a thousand with like 200 billion dollars and if they all if one of those wallets like moves that to coinbase and hits the sell button at like a hundred thousand like i would like to know what's going to happen does coinbase cover that do they move the price down to zero and those are the things that i kind of like like what's what's going on because you know when i you know, you talk about in like 2008 when, uh, you know, that 2008, 2009, when uh, Bitcoin kind of went on the market. It was only like $600 back then. I, I was going to buy oh, some. Oh, and in, two, in 2008, it was even Yeah, I was like, I had cheaper. a Coinbase I had a Coinbase account that I was just like, am I going to buy something? Like, you know, you never know where this is by. And I just left it dormant until like, all of a sudden it was at like, a, you know, 10000 And I was like, do I still 2009, I should say. In 2008, I don't even think it was uh, officially... Uh, because in 2008 is when uh, it, the, the yeah. white paper drops, Yeah, yeah, the 2008 right. is when the white paper and stuff was written. Right. But, like, 2009, it kind of went, like, a little viral a little bit, and everyone was like, what is that? And that was when it was, like, $700. Like, you could just buy, like, one coin and I sit think, on it I and say, even see what cheaper. happens. I don't think it hit 700 it was like six... until years later. I don't think it hit... I don't know. I, I remember it being, like, maybe it was, like, 300 or something. It was, like, you could probably drop, like, you know, 1000 bucks and, and hold on to it. And it was just, you know, it was just weird. But, like... I always just tell people like if one of those wallets moves, hits the sell button, you know, that has like a hundred billion in it, that's not, you know, a, a state actor or, you know, one of these like ETFs or, or things. I'm like, there's going to be some sort of issue that, you know, that happens where, you know, are, are any of these exchanges going to cover that? Like what, what's, what's the status? How many, you know, those people that have that bought 10,000, is it going to go back up after, you know, I'm like, those are things that make me like not put, you know, a thousand dollars in there where it's just like i don't know where that you know who has control of that you know at least so you know, so least... bitcoin bitcoin doesn't hit the hundreds of dollars until yeah. until sometime between uh in in 2012 2012 so, yeah okay yeah. yeah right it had to be 2012 i was at i was at like I think I was at like Vandenberg on that. I'm, I'm just like trying to get my like military my stuff. I was just about to get out right. of the military there. No, so it was that, like trust me was... that for some reason for me as well the like 2000 to like 
Yeah, the, 2012. The, like 2000, like the early 2010s. Right. It all just meld together for me. Like I could tell you right. distinctly about what each, what like big things that happened in each year in the 90s. But for some right. reason, 2000 to two, the, the early 2010s is just like a, oh, a yeah, mush a for br- me. Blur, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I understand that. And then to, to go off with uh, the AI stuff, like I, as a guy who like trades stock and stuff, it's, it's, it's fun just, you know, just like AI hype. And I always say like, you know, they talk about the, where they call it AI. And I'm just like, it, the, I think it's like an insult to like sci-fi and an actual like AI theory, like a- Isaac Asimov and, 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 uh, yeah, they, they shouldn't call and, it like, AI. Real right. sci-fi, like go, ghost in the shell. I'm like, it's not AI. Cause it's like, Oh, the singularity. I'm like, okay, but you look up the old stuff like Isaac, Isaac Asimov and Ghost in the Shell. It's not just the robots become more human. It's humans are becoming more machine. Robots are becoming more human. And where that line blurs is the singularity where, okay, humans and machines are now the same. And what do we call that? What's the soul? What's all this? And that's that exploratory. Calling this AI is just, I, I always find it just, I'm like, it's not AI. Like, have you... You know, just like the guy, you know, the the guest was talking, who was just like, there's like a cat with three arms. And I'm like, I look at those, like, those videos. And I'm like, all these things have a problem with, like, lighting, shadow, drawing in perspective. Like, those things that you learn as like a, like a, like a four-year-old where in your drawing class, they make you draw the little railroad with the, with the, the, the guard post. That thing you learn at like three years old, when in your first painting class. Somehow these mach- they haven't like piped that into the machine and it remembers that as in like hey this is what this is and how all these you know lightings be formed like you see those like I think the recent one someone put out where it was like a gallery where it just went in through the window and everyone's big and like someone like walk is walking backwards and their feet come out of their like they're facing this way and then their head spins around it's just like there's a problem with that like they're like and they're like oh it's just new it's gonna be great in like ten years I'm like but like this is stuff that. Like, uh, you know, you learn as a, a kid and like, like a, like a five-year-old can get like, you know, I, you see sometimes kids who like drawing and they're like really good. It's just like, they're better than some adults that learn in, you know, at their old age. I'm just like, oh my God, no, it's, it's, I'm like, this is horrible. Like, right. I, and like, I, I don't know why anyone says it's good. Um, you know, what's, you know, you, you mentioned how you, you do a little bit of uh stock trading and what, yeah. what, you know, being that you brought up AI, you know, what's concerning yeah. to me, I've seen I've seen like apps and and like uh, platforms that claim to give stock tips that are AI yeah. powered, and I'm like, what? The, I would not trust any oh, yeah, no. any 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 trades. Some of them are automated <laughs> too. Like the AI will automomatically make the trades for you, and it's like, yeah, where they're like, what oh, write the, this I would code not, to put I out would an not AI trust trade. that. I would no, not I don't trust, trust that. that. Like the stuff that like you know, hedge funds and like Goldman Sachs have, they have in-house people who are programming, doing all the math. And even those, like, you know, the flash crash of 2010 and stuff where it's like, yeah, those don't even work all the time. Like you want to trust 10 grand to some random AI that like, you know, somebody else, somebody else wrote. I'm like, oh man, this is, it's, 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 it's wild. It's a crazy, crazy world out there. Um, you know, I don't know where it's going to go, but I mean, for the stock side, it's good to make money from like the chips and Nvidia and all that side is is pretty great. Where with like technology wise, because you know things like healthcare and all that stuff, I think there's a benefit there where computing computing data. I think like you know PlayStation Three had that like folding at home uh, system where they were doing protein folding for like certain cancer research, and you would just leave your PlayStation running and it would do that do that stuff and like just throw it to like I forget where it was. Princeton or want some college I'm like yeah those things are good but I don't know why they think it's just going to be this is going to do you know high level high level things like I did something with coding and that got, got me figuring out like chat GPT after like 20 chats it has no idea what the rest of those are like you're not having a conversation with it you know if you right. if you're typing in do this do this do this after like 20 that the when you pass, it has no idea what you're going to do and we'll just forget it and restart. And I'm like, okay, well, this is not good for coding. Um, it doesn't do cleaning, clean up really well. You have to tell it to do that where it's like, you know, if you know anything about like C+, it's like, okay, you write a bunch of stuff, but then you want to crunch that down into just one command where it pulls that from another, from, from like another file. And it can't do that really well unless you tell it, tell it to, you know, to, to do that. But 
You know what? I'm I, I have no idea. I just say that you know the AI hype is crazy. Um, the Bitcoin you know bros are coming back out like, oh yeah, it's just like it's just like the dollar. I'm like, well no, because the the dollar is you know we got Fed, entire military, and control over what the dollar is worth. But I always tell me, people that tell me with Bitcoin just to just to go out and then you can get the next caller. It's like, how much is a Bitcoin worth if you don't have if you're not gonna do it in any you know currency? Like let's say the world collapses. Oh my God, like my, my cat. Now I have a cat too. See, like, everyone's got no. That's, uh, this this show is cat friendly. Right, right. <laughs> Ed's cat yeah. was jumping up on the screen too, on his right. lap too. Right, right. And I just say like, what is a Bitcoin worth without a dollar? Like, don't tell me it's worth a dollar. I'm like, I know a dollar's worth a dollar due to a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, you talk about money and currency, even in like you know Roman times. I'm like, okay. That's that money is based off like the king and how many farms and resources and, you know, vassals and all the stuff they own. That was in land and they just needed a place to transact instead of like, hey, give me a, you know, you know, 40 bushels of your your, you know, grain all day. It was like, OK, you owe me this taxes when you pay all that money to transact. You give these coins to you to me, you know, or we're just going to take your entire farm and, you know kill your family and put you in the military or something. That's that's where currency in the old world, like this stuff is just, it's a coin, they print it, someone gives someone $5, a number goes up on a screen and I'm like, okay, but what happens if all that goes away? We're gonna, you're gonna like show up with your your phone or something? Like, okay, well, how many, you know, how much food is worth three Bitcoins to? Like who's controlling that? If Coinbase goes away, I have no idea, but yeah. Let's continue the show. I'll see you guys. I'll see you later. Thanks for oh, the call. That was a great call. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Now, this is, uh, it, it's, uh, is this your first time calling in? Yeah, it's my first time. I got through that. Uh, like, yeah, please call in any time. This was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, anytime. I love... if, I, if I'm sitting here ready, I'll, I'll call in. Yeah. I'll, great. I'll Take care. Have a okay. great night. No problem. You too. Bye. Always, always love when people call in with their own, because I'm not a, you know, I'm, I don't have that same background. I don't have that, um, you know, I'm not a stock trader, even though obviously I, pay attention to it as it pertains to scam economy and uh the the get rich quick world so it was uh, interesting to hear from that point of view let's go back to the phones oh hey Matt. hey what's your name where are you it's... calling from i know i know who it is but for the audience what's your name where are you calling from it's i'm from the uk i didn't think i uh, what's going on with Skype today? You just cut out. Right, can you hear me? Hello? Connection lost. And call back in. I think because people are calling in to me, so it's not my connection. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? And maybe it is my connection. I just lost uh, the next caller too. Uh-oh. Let's see what happens. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It's me again. Hey, I don't, I don't know what happened there. I thought it was your connection. No, it was working. I could still hear you, but you couldn't hear me, so I don't know. But then it said lost connection, so that's what happened. Who knows? But anyway, you're on with me now. What did they talk about, Anne? Oh, my God. It says reconnecting now. Is it me? Obviously, the oh, you're back. Is... You're back. You're back. You were we lost you again, but you're back. I don't know what happened. Quick, get out whatever you want to say in case we, this happens again. And it happened again. Reconnecting. Is trust going over to it, America? It, it, hap and... it happened again. It happened again. Ah. We, you keep cutting out and then coming back in. I don't know what's happening. Let's try one more time. Go ahead. Nope, it's not going to work. You keep cutting out. I don't know what's going on. Being that the chat is coming in, for me, I'm going to assume it's not me. Because the stream hasn't ended. I'm still here. As far as I know, I'm still here. YouTube says I have excellent connection. 
Uh, I'll read some super chats while people try to figure out if they could call in. Um, let's see. Uh, Henry, oh, really quick. Henry Wise says, I wrote a thank you letter for a summer fellowship with one super quick click. Oh, wait, this isn't even a super chat. <laughs> All right, let's go to the calls again. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Matt, it's Tony from Texas. Hey, Tony, how are you? I'm doing all right. Am I coming through? Uh, okay. You, 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 you are, which means I am breathing a sigh of relief because I was really worried it was my connection. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, good to uh, know. It's just Anne's connection. I'm sorry, <laughs> Anne. And I'm watching chat. So if there's anything particular you want me to uh, to relate to Matt, let me know. Um, so uh, do you want do you want my um, uh, election take or do you want my AI take? We could hear both. It's totally up to you which you want to start with. Um, okay. The, the, we'll, we'll, st we'll start with the election thing because it's real short. A really a, – a, 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 an analogy that uh, crossed my mind uh, this past week is that elections are like the draft phase in a MOBA or like compet like um, uh, uh, competitive team sport where you've got unique characters to choose from, or like uh, like a sports draft. Like it is the election is the prep phase. It's about choosing who your opponent is going to be before the game really gets going, and it's after the election that you're really supposed to be playing ball. And and your mindset during the election is how how do I get things into position with my team so that we have favorable odds or more the most favorable odds that we can garner for ourselves in the upcoming match. So that's that's the mindset I try to put on for elections, and that's the that's the mindset I encourage others to put on for elections. It's not about voting your conscience it's about prepping for the game um and and setting the field for for the kind of fight that you need to have uh yeah. to to win to win the kind of change that you you want to see um yeah there you go uh i unfortunately did not get to vote uncommitted i could not write in on my uh on my ballot um you can't you can't even write in um I it, I was I I went and voted early, and the like electronic voting booth thing did not give me any kind of option for writing, writing in. Even? Oh. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. So, I just voted somebody other than Biden for the primary. Um. It's uh yeah, it it is what it is. I I. I, I did I did what I could to vote against the most <laughs> conservative options available. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, um, uh, it it not not a lot of not a lot of options in uh in Tejas um not 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 around where I'm at at least uh I did I don't know if you caught uh. Letter hack last night. Uh, I did not catch letter hack last night. What happened? What's up? What should I? Uh, what should I go check out? Uh, John from San Antonio was on letter hack last night. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Matt and John had a had a really good uh, conversation about, uh, you know, polls and stats and numbers and stuff and it's just it's a good it's a good uh good little show i recommend i recommend going and checking it out i don't i don't know i don't know if you ever heard of the letter hack um <laughs> if i ever heard of the letter hack <laughs> yeah no never <laughs> no idea um but yeah yeah um and then uh let's see that they 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 the ai stuff um as 
uh, as an artist who has been very keyed into these goings on, like I've, I like 100, like 100 percent agree with so much of, uh, uh, what you and Ed have had to say on the matter this evening, um, that it is very overhyped and it is very overblown. Um, uh, I think, I think Ed does underestimate the use cases of AI, but not by much. Um, uh, I, it's, it's been very handy and like quickly crunching out, like prototypey mock-ups of stuff um, to like get a point across or convey an idea with a client and trying to figure out what direction they want us to go with actually like making the final product um, like ourselves. Uh, But yeah, like honestly in the best cases, like, I maybe see it shaving like 10, 15% off of like production times on certain things. Like it's, it can't, it can't be useful. Um, there, there are potentially ways that it could help reduce friction for people trying to create. But again, the key thing is that it's like people that, n- in order to get anything of value out of these tools, you still need people doing the creating, making executive creative choices. Um, and like, you know, uh, uh, being able to, uh, say, uh, take a model, like a rough model of something and be like, all right. Um, use this as a control and basically have the AI filter over that, the render of that model in a couple of different ways and then be like, okay, I like the element that it threw in over here and the element that it threw in over here. Now I'm going to like finalize and and draw over and, and make like the thing that I like out of these elements that, that were kind of randomized. And then you make a like an actual texture and you make a solid thing that you then go and like animate and do like this, this idea of trying to like get the AI to generate things whole cloth. It, like Ed said, is just, it's not reasonable. Like the, the more steps out away from a specific task that you give it, the more opportunity for error and hallucination because it cannot, it does not, it does not have a holistic idea of things. It doesn't understand the whole. It is just predicting things piece by piece based off of a data set. Right. Um, Really really quick, Tony, really quick. I just noticed that over on Twitch, I just got a raid from Dylan Burns. Thank you so much, Dylan. And uh, welcome to Dylan's uh, viewers. We're basically uh, earlier on this stream. I spoke with Ed Zitron about what's going on with the crypto uh, bubble right now. And, you know, number going up. And we talked about a little bit about AI as well. Now we're taking calls. Uh, Ed has left for the, the, the night, but taking calls, talking to listener or Tony in Texas, uh, about AI right now. And if you want to call in, please feel free, open up Skype or go to skype.com. You don't need to download anything and search doomed live and, uh, give me a ring. I take the calls as they come in after each caller. I'll be around for, uh, you know, another geez. What time is it? Only about 1115. I'll be taking a few more calls. So, uh, call in, feel free. Uh, continue, Tony. Sorry, just wanted yeah. to make sure they knew what was going on. Yeah, no. Well, welcome, welcome, Dylan Burns uh, audience. Uh, don't don't forget to also check out uh, Patreon dot com slash Matt Bender um, uh, to to you know get uh, updates on uh, both the scam economy, this show, and uh, Matt's uh, other uh, podcast, Doomed. I appreciate uh, the plug and, and the upcoming newsletter. Um, right. Or at the very <laughs> least, being that you guys are on Twitch, and that's where you're watching. If you're not already following me on Twitch, 
take the minute to, to press, uh, not even a minute, take the second to click that little follow button at twitch.tv slash Matt Binder, the channel page you're on right now. All right, Tony, continue. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. No, but yeah, so yeah, the, 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 all, the, all that to say, like, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the AI hype dying down. Um, and, uh, just it, like, it's, it's, it's a thing that I'm like, I've kind of like, uh, I've, 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 I've learned to embrace like certain certain tools and certain certain ways of using it um and i got a project that is really starting to grow some legs um and uh you know we've we've been using it for doing some of our um uh part of our our pipeline and process but we've got a very um uh what i call the wafer method because <laughs> you got you got you've got a human made element of art and you kind of filter or run it through a bit of uh uh ai and then you do another bit of human touch up and modification and tweaking and so there's never like any time you're using any kind of ai process tool there is there is a human element um bookending that that is making sure that what is what is getting put into the final product has like human authorship and human choices and you know like how that is implemented um and uh yeah i'm excited i'm excited about it i uh i'll i'll probably i'll probably have links and stuff to plug uh next week on that um but if anybody likes star trek type stuff i think you're gonna enjoy um the podcast Ooh. that i've been working on um i think you're giving a lot away there <laughs> uh, uh, uh it's 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 uh it's it's just gonna be like a it's not it's not gonna be like a terribly like long running thing um but uh but we've uh we just put out uh, a pilot episode um and uh my uh, my creative partner got to go on a uh on a uh star trek cruise Ooh. And, uh, yeah, it was like a, basically a convention on a cruise liner. Um, and he got to rub bubbles with a bunch of, uh, Star Trek cast, um, and yeah. stuff. Can you name specific cast members? Oh man. Like, uh, 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 Tawny Newsom and Eugene Cordero, I think, uh, Jerry Ryan. I mean, it was a huge, huge list. Robert Picardo, uh, Garrett Wang, um god i mean hold on give me give me one sec and i can actually pull up um uh, let's see scroll 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 um Sonequa martin green walter keenig will wheaton brent spiner gates mcfadden lavar burton john delancey denise crosby nana visitor armin Sh uh shimmerman um uh, max grodenjik uh race Ma uh, chase matterson Robert Picardo, Garrett Wang, John Billingsley, Connor Trinier, uh, Anthony Montgomery, um, and I think like uh, uh, Dominic Keating, Doug Jones, Anthony Rapp, David Ayala, uh, Mary Chifo, Eve Harlow, Michelle Hurd, Ed Spielers, Todd uh, Stashwick, Peyton List, Tony Newsom, Eugene Cordero, uh, Gabriel uh, Ruiz. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, he, uh, my creative partner got to, got to do a little presentation on the, uh, little alt verse, uh, pot the, we're calling it dark Trek. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, kind of all alt verse star Trek tabletop, uh, podcast thing that we've been doing. Um, and he got to go on and do, do a presentation after a lecture on the, uh, history of batliths. So, uh, it was, it was super nerdy scene. Um, and he got, to, got to get some good connections for us. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, look forward to that. Um, all that said, like AI, yes, AI is overblown. No, it won't be the end of the world. Billionaires will be, um, 
<laughs> That's a pretty, yeah, uh, pretty good, <laughs> pretty good assessment. Well, Matt, thanks for uh, letting me uh, go off on a rant. And, no, I enjoy and, uh, hearing. I enjoy, you know, you call in, you give us uh, great, interesting stuff. The least I can do is let you uh, spend a little time promoting uh, your upcoming uh, project. Yeah, well, I appreciate you as always, and uh, y'all have a great night. Chat, love you. Emmy, Martian, love you. I saw you thing. I miss you too. Bye, everybody. Have a great night, Tony. I, I'm just I, I was looking over here at because this is this is very interesting actually. The um the uncommitted vote. It's Super Tuesday. You know, I said earlier, I didn't really want to focus too much on that because I didn't think. You know, uh, anything too interesting was going to come out of the night. Uh, the obvious people won. But I, I will say, this is really interesting. And I was not expecting this. And I'm glad to see it. And it just goes to show you. It just goes to prove that this isn't only a Michigan thing. And if Michigan voters, if the, the uncommitted vote campaign had a little bit more time, it started fairly late in the you know the primary race um if they had a little bit more time to promote imagine what they could have done in michigan I, you know michigan voters um voted a decent amount over a hundred thousand people in michigan voted uncommitted and i think it was um what percent was it in, in michigan uh it's like something like uh 15 percent or something like that something around there maybe a little bit less but over a hundred thousand people voted uncommitted in michigan and the thought process was wow that much in such a short amount of time they had to promote it imagine what they could have done with extra time what we're seeing what they could have done with extra time because as of right now in minnesota Uncommitted has over 20% of the vote. Now, there's less voters all over, all around than it, there were in Michigan for, for Uncommitted and Joe Biden. But the percentage of it, I mean, this is astounding to see. It's around 20%. It keeps hovering back and forth. It was a little bit over 20%. Now it's a little bit below 20%, but it's about 20%. I see 19.9% right now. Almost 40,000 votes. It's, it's impressive. We'll see how they keep trickling in. But the most impressive thing is that it's not just a Michigan thing. And if this continues... Joe Biden is in trouble. And the way to make sure it does not continue, if Joe Biden doesn't want to be in trouble, is to specifically, not just call for one, he's the President of the United States, tell Israel, ceasefire, no, not a humanitarian pause, then a six-week ceasefire and then resume the killing. Permanent ceasefire in exchange for hostage release. And then it's all done. Because this is getting... You know, the, the idea that this is going to stop. This is getting big. It was already big with Michigan, but it's getting big. They cannot afford to lose tens of thousands, in some states, hundreds of thousands of votes. Especially in states where it only won by a few 10,000 votes. All right, to those callers who I uh, ignored, there was a few of you. Feel free to call in again. I'll take your calls now. I want to just cover that really quick. We can continue talking about it too. But um, go to Skype, 
doomed live on Skype. I'll take your calls here while we wait. Oh, no reason to wait. Callers are already coming back in. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, bud. It's Charlie from Washington. How you doing? Hey, Charlie from Washington. How are you? Okay, pull your uh, feet up on the... Uh, oh, shape. yes, please. What's up, Charlie? What would you like to talk about? Um, A couple of interesting like little updates. One not surprising, one genuinely surprising. Um, oh, okay. I, d- I do want to say that uncommitted was on the ballot in Washington State, and that's what I voted for because... Was wa- Washington you know, I, State was today, too? No, ours. I, I, we, I got my mail-in ballot early. It, oh, I don't think well, it happens well, until like when, the twelfth or something like that over here. Okay. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I, you know, it's a safe state, and we'll get to that. And so, what? It's probably not going to be like taken that seriously by the elites because you know we're just going to be considered a shoe in anyway, so we're ignorable. But I thought maybe that. The larger those numbers are nationally, the less alone the people in the Muslim community as a whole might feel. Because, right. you know, solidarity is important. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, looking uh, yeah. at some of the other places where, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, some some states don't have uncommitted. I'm looking at the Super Tuesday states right now. Um, you know, some states don't, you have to vote for a candidate. and And that's where... To me, that makes it even more interesting. When there is, when you have to vote for a candidate, Joe Biden wins with an overwhelming amount. There's no one that gets close. There's no one that gets out of single digits. Like Vermont, for example. Uh, Joe Biden with 89.4% of the vote. Marion Williamson in second with 4.6%. So this isn't, this is very specifically in the uncommitted, where people can vote uncommitted. This is very specifically potential Biden voters sending Joe Biden a message. Um, you know, I'm looking at, let's see, where else? Where else can you vote uncommitted? Yeah, these states where you have to vote for a candidate, Joe Biden, no one gets close. No one takes even double digits like the, unco- like the places where you can vote uncommitted. Um, let's see. I don't even know if they're counting Washington's ballots yet because, you know, they're still doing the mail-in part of it. I, th- I think that starts on like that. Well, I, I don't I don't know exactly. Massachusetts, um, you could vote no preference. That's got almost 9% of the vote with over 33,000 votes. Um, where else? Let's see. I'm looking through these. Colorado has an uncommitted vote with 7.5%, 36,700 votes. That's more than any individual actual candidate, obviously, other than Joe Biden. Um, I'm looking. I mean, this is... Minnesota is... That's impressive. It's a... Hovering around twenty thousand. Mm, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Excuse me. I, you know, I don't want to vote for Joe Biden at all, and and this will actually segue into the two like weird little updates that I want to give. So, um, yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I think I ended up ranting about like how he threw internet uh, immigrants. Sorry. How he threw immigrants under the bus to fund the genocide in, in Gaza. Because, like, I'll keep saying that until I die because it's fucking true and it's fucking awful. But uh, I think it was, like, Thursday or Friday I walk into work. And, you know, I, I've mentioned before how conservative most of my coworkers are. The one that's, like, the nicest one, who doesn't even actually seem all that conservative, just bitching about the border. And when I tried to point out to him, I said, well, you know, he tried to do a bipartisan deal where he gave the Republicans like literally everything they asked. He cut me off and said, don't even fucking start. And I was so pissed for the rest of the fucking day because Joe Biden threw the immigrants under the bus to win over people like that. 
and that's about exactly how I thought it, it would go. It, it, it was it was pretty incredible how like every every topic I would bring up like each Any week about just, like one. Oh my god! <laughs> like like everything I'd be like, okay, we can't listen. Um, I we can't throw migrants under the bus because of other things Joe Biden's doing. And then what does Joe Biden do? He throws uh, migrants under the bus. And I was like, well, uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, uh, Roe, uh, you know, abortion rights. And then he's throwing that under the bus, too. It's yeah, it's amazing. Thing after thing, after thing after thing after mm-hmm. thing. It's like any reason there was to vote Democrats. They're out there. The Biden administration's fucking out there going, oh, you thought that was me, too? No, 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 no. That, you know, you shouldn't even vote for me for that. It's incredible. I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about uh, him anymore. You all know my opinion on it. I think he is. Uh, he he went from being surprisingly uh, decent compared to the the low bar to uh, one of the absolute worst people on yeah. the planet. Like you know, you know, I'm not a part of the. the... Some or Palestinian communities. I'm not a part of. You don't of have to be though. But... You don't have to be. You no, don't, you have, don't to, have to, 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 to feel basic no, no. empathy. Yeah. Just, to feel here... basic humanity. Yeah, but like here's here's the thing about that. I am part of the trans community, and they are a target that the GOP loves to go after because it's red meat for their base. And I see him throw other red meat for the the, the GOP's other red meat to their base, just re- ready to throw them to the walls. How the fuck is he going to treat me when it's convenient? You know? Right. Yeah. And not to make this about me or to make this about trans people, but it's just the entire point of putting him there was that he wasn't them and he's them. And, you know, and the other thing, the, the other update I want to give on it. You remember a while back I called in, there was these guys outside of Walmart doing these petitions for just like dumb stuff. Uh, I, this is actually the second time I've ever heard a man. By, it was by one of those guys. Well, I found out that apparently in Washington State, you can get initiatives to just be the law if you get enough signatures on your petition, which apparently they did for three of their goals. Wait, just be the law? You don't mean get uh, you know on the ballot? It doesn't get on the ballot. It doesn't have to go to the governor. If you get enough petitions, apparently you could just sign it in the law unless I think you can make it a referendum but you have to do that within a time period and people would have to know that these things are out there. And I don't think people are going to know these things are out there. So the three of the past, um, the first one is, uh, they want a permanent ban on income tax, which we don't have an income tax. Every time it comes up for a vote, we, it, it always fails. It's literally worthless. Yeah. It, it does nothing. It is nothing. It's just, um, the second one is the parental rights bill. Um, you know, the standard stuff they want to know about any uh, safety or medical care uh, interests. They want to be able to look at the curriculum and all of this other nonsense. But, you know, what are they going to term as safety and medical? Hmm? You know, don't out your kids. If you're a teacher and your kid comes to you and they come out to you, don't, don't fucking out them to anybody, not even their fucking parents. It is a safety issue. Um, yeah. If, if they don't come out to their parents, there's a reason, it, you know. And then the last one, the one that pisses me off the most, is uh, they wanted to loosen restrictions on uh, police chases. And I, I, I got an article over here that I'm looking right at. Um, basically, the initiative, which would scale back those restrictions further to allow uh, police to chase people if they have a reasonable suspicion that the person they want to chase has violated the law and threatens other safety. Basically. And we all know how reasonable police are, right? Look at fucking Acorn Cop. That's the guy. This, this is in Seattle, too. We had that story where um, the police union guy was laughing about a, a lady who got hit at 70 miles an hour by a policeman who didn't have his lights on when he was just blowing past an intersection. These are the people that they're loosening those restrictions are. And this is in a safe state, which is why I keep saying there's no such thing as safe states. But, you know, Democrats are going to treat us like a guaranteed shoe in because 
where else are we going to fucking go? And again, they think this is a safe state because they're fucking arrogant. Sorry, I, I, I vowed that I wasn't... No, I, no please. But these these updates I felt were worth it um, a little bit, so... Sorry. <laughs> no, please. I'm, I'm, I, you know, it's, it's, this is enraging stuff. So please feel free I'm to shaking, show your rage. Literally shaking right now. I'm so goddamn livid. And it's just, and, you know, going back to the, the other point, he trying to win over the people who went out for those petitions. You know, instead of, the people who showed up and saved his fucking sorry hide. I I really fucking hate Joe Biden. If you know the if he really wanted to save democracy, he could just have a heart attack. You know, <laughs> uh, not that I wish harm on people, but if I mean, if you he know, really wants to save democracy, isn't it easy that he could yeah, actually do he could start. actually do proactive things? There's actually steps he can take. There's actually things he can do. There's actually there's actually. He doesn't even he doesn't even use the very most basic stuff like the bull, the presidential bully pulpit. The idea that the president of the United States has the largest platform on the planet could go out there and use pressure from the president of the United States to get people to enact policy, to support policy, to support things he wants them to do, to tell allies what they should do or at least um, get them to agree to certain aspects of what uh, he wants them to do. He uses none of it. It's the president of the United States, Joe Biden, is with all that power, one of the biggest pushovers on the planet. Has done nothing to show any enforcement, to show any force, to show any oomph in getting through what he claims he and his party stand for, which the fact that they don't do that leaves you with the only option of assuming that they don't actually care about that stuff. They don't actually stand for that stuff, not surprising. But if you're someone who believes that they do, this should tell you everything, really, that they won't do it. They won't do this very basic stuff that they can do, these very basic yet very powerful tools that the president can use to enact things that he wants to see. He just doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. I, you know... Me, me. I've been kind of cutting down on the on the news because a lot of the news sources I I watch cover Gaza excellently, and you know you can only handle so much of that. But uh, you know even with that, I haven't heard him say I haven't heard any response to that letter the Dems in Florida sent. Going Wait, what here. was that? You cut you cut out for a split second. Say that again. You the I I still haven't heard them say anything about that letter that the Florida them sent to say, Hey, come in here and like do something about this. This, oh. this, this shit is getting bad here. Nothing. Yeah. That's what, our, that's what him throwing us under the bus is going to I mean, like the queer community is, it's going to look like them just avoiding the topic altogether. Cause I think they saw the, the, the red wave turn into red piss trickle and they saw that, trans issues was a losing issue for the Republicans. So they probably think it's a fucking losing issue for them. So they're going to avoid it like the plague. Yeah. They might fundraise off of it, but they're going to fucking avoid it like the plague. That's, that's what them throwing us under the bus is going to look like uh, queer people. Like us, I mean, you know, but yeah, you know, yeah. no, that's, I mean, they're already, they're already, they've already thrown, I mean, I still can't believe the 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 immigration thing. It is like what a what a slap in the face. What a, what a slap in the face to anyone who ever all the undocumented immigrants, all the 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 people with family, all the people who were trying to come here, all the people who are here. What a slap in the face to to, to, it's to not even take, like. They take the right wing framing. What a and this was and they 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 fully supported uh, Democrats because this is who they thought would have their back. Unbelievable. You know, and this is this is on top of you know watching him him, him squash a railroad strike just before a really big bad chemical fucking 
derailment. And this is watching his, his response to the BLM and the defund the police being like, no, we need to fund them more, fund them, fund them, fund them, you know, over and over and over again. And then they come around and say, hey, you better vote for us because they're going to kill you. And they're right. They got the Republicans have a news fit for me. And, you know, I like I said, I live in a safe state and they're passing parental rights bills and police chase bills. Um, yeah. So I, anyway, I'm going to get off before I, I, I rant even for you. Let's no, I, I love it. I think a good a good rant is great because it it really gets people to understand, I think, the the real effects and toll that because it shows that you're a person you, people have emotions to, to just be able to you know we don't need we don't need more more people sitting in front of a camera uh reading off a script giving you the straight the straightforward news we need people actual people out there saying this is how this is going to affect me and i care it's not enough of that there'll never be enough of that even if there, if there, even if there ever is a lot of people, something out of this. <laughs> even if there ever is a lot of people doing that, we always need more. So, uh, great call, Charlie. Really great call. And you know, don't. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to say honestly. But don't, 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 don't totally give up. I'll, don't, I'll, don't do that. Uh, I haven't given up. I'm, it's just, it's just draining. Um, but you know, it, you know, any way you can, guys show Palestinians and Muslims that you have solidarity with them because they really fucking need it right now. Um, and let's just pray that Donald Trump and Joe Biden's hearts decide to elope together and you know we don't have to deal with them anymore. <laughs> have, a, have a great night, Charlie. Great call. Later, bud. All right. Ooh. We had some great calls in that. Uh, let's see. I could take one more if uh, maybe two, but let's see how many people call in. Right now, it doesn't seem like it seems like whoever was trying to call in before has given up. There was uh, one, two, three, three other people trying to call in before, but I don't see them. Ooh, excuse me, trying right now. I will read some super chats. There wasn't too many, but let's read them. Um, we got, uh, Kowalski with a super sticker. Thank you, Kowalski. We got, uh, Renee with a few super chats. I'll read them off. Just like casinos that keep their bigger gamblers trapped in the casino with their flights canceled with open credit to lose money. They were just talking about the crypto earlier. Uh, wait for Casey Neistat to crash while wearing one. This was about uh, the Apple Vision Pro we were talking about earlier. And Renee, again, Apple and ChatGPT can sell it as a new opiate. And Parker with a super chat, 63% reporting in Minnesota, uncommitted at 20.4%. Let's double check. It was, it was, I, I checked after that and it was lower, but let's, let's see where it's at now. It's, um, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by how this went. All right, it's it's dropping a little bit as the 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 polling comes in, but it's still going to be very high. We're at 86% reporting, and uncommitted is at 19.5%, over 44,000 votes. That's that's impressive. That's impressive. Again, this is a vote to show a protest vote for nobody to protest Joe Biden's uh, policies of supporting Israel in its uh, genocide campaign in Gaza. Um, This is impressive. Um, Oh, California also has the primary vote, right? Oh, boy. How's that going? I forgot about that shit. Ugh. Adam Schiff is winning this one. 
even if Barbara Lee dropped out, it wouldn't have mattered. Katie Porter is so behind. Adam Schiff with over a million votes. And Katie Porter with just 421,000. With 36% of votes in. Not, ooh. That's a horrible showing from the Democrats, other than Adam Schiff. Man. Adam Schiff's going to be the senator from California for a very long time. This is unfortunate. Oh, let's take this call. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Matt Bender. This is uh, Jeff from Massachusetts. Hey, Jeff, could I pull your video up on the feed? Uh, sure, I'm kind of, yeah, why not? I, I don't have to. It's fine if you don't yeah, want do me it. to. Do it, do it. Oh. Covered in shadows, do it. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? What was it to talk about? Um, well, uh, so yeah, so I'm in Massachusetts. Uh, so I got a cool story and a really frustrating story. Oh, let's um, hear it. Oh, you voted today yeah. or? I did, yes. Yeah, so I voted uh, I voted no preference. So did my wife. We were pretty happy to do that. You know, I mean, voting sucks. Right. It just sucks, you know. Right. But anyway, um, so yeah. So uh, you want to hear the cool story or the uh, frustrating story? Uh, like, I will hear. Uh, let, let's, let's start with, well, th does it matter in terms of, uh, the, the story, yeah. which, okay. So let's, yeah, let's means. start with the, let's, let's end on a, know. let's, let's end it on a, a, a happier note. So let's hear the frustrating stuff first. Okay. So frustrating story. Um, I belong to this very lib, uh, blue, no matter who, like Facebook group, it's called, ah, it doesn't matter what it's called. Anyway, the important part is tons of members, um, the goblin that runs it just oof. anyway. Um, but uh, so anytime they post about Palestine, just, you know, got, you know, Palestine, Gaza, um, a bunch, you know, just it turns into a Trump rally, you know, um, just everybody's like, oh, well, you know, the terrorists, you know, they need to return the they need to return the hostages and, you know, um, just stuff like that. And so uh, Friday night, I think it was. Um, you know, it was the day, well, you know, the day, uh, uh, Harris made her statement. Um, you know, so guy that runs, it makes a post about it. Um, you know, a few, uh, you know, a few, uh, few people post, uh, you know, what about the hostages, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and then he locks the thread and then he, and then the, the admin, the guy that runs the page, he, uh, immediately posts another thread about how, like, you know, these guys, you know, we just exist to defeat MAGA, you know, and that's all we're here for, you know, so we're not going to ask anything specifically of our politicians. We're just going to, you know, we just don't want Trump to win. Um, and then he posts another uh, another thread, um, you know, makes another post about, uh, you know, just gaslighting people about that that previous thread. And he's like, oh, you know, when you're when you get, you know, when your pressure campaign works and you get what you finally want you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk back, you know what I mean? So like, you shouldn't be saying stuff like, oh, about time or too little too late or, you know, anything like that. You know, you should just be happy that they're finally, you know, listening, you know, but the thing is like this thread was a bunch of people supporting Israel, you know? So like, he's trying, it's, it's like the weirdest thing in the world, but like, um, you know, but, uh, and that's, you know, and that's you hear like every time like Gaza comes up, every time, you know, anything like that happens. Um, and they're really mad about the the no preference vote, um, you know, or, you know, well, no preference in Massachusetts, uh, you know, uncommitted elsewhere. Um, uh, but anyway, um, you know, and of course, they're going to they're going to talk trash about anybody, you know, that is left of center, you know, at all, pretty much if you're not like. You know, if you just don't, if you don't like love Joe Biden, any kind of criticism they're not into, they don't want to hear about that. It's all, you know, they're like good vibes only. But for Joe Biden, it's it's the you know, it is it is the strangest thing. And like in 2020, it was the same thing. Like, you know, the second Biden won it was South Carolina. That was like his first big win in the, you know, in the primary, you know, you know, they weren't 
you know, everybody had to rally behind Biden. You know, you couldn't, there was no more, there was no more support for Sanders, no more support for, you know, anybody else. You know, it was all Biden or bust at that point. But yeah, they're, but yeah, just like this weird, like frustrating group that just everybody, you know, there's, there's, there's no room for any kind of, you know, like, you know, they say they're progressive, but like, you know, they don't, you know, they just want the status quo. That's all they're right. really into. Oh, well. want to continue. Um, you know, they don't that's, a, that's a that's a huge portion of like the mm. Democratic Party base. They're not really they're 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 liberals, not really progressives. Yeah. 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 But anyway, beyond that, though, the cool story, uh, the cool story is that there is a club in Cambridge. It's called the Sinclair um, and management booked and uh, a, a fundraiser for Israel to rebuild Israel. So that sucks. But uh, the entire staff, like all 40 people that worked there, said, we're not going to work this show. So, you know, the club said, oh, you know, we leased it out. We, you know, we leased the facilities and our staff out without actually asking what the program was going to be, which seems like wildly unlikely. But like I said, all 40 staff members of the club, you know, so the bartenders, the servers, uh, you know, box office, coat check, every, you know, all the support staff, everybody that works there, um, you know, they said, we're not going to work this show. So the club had to get. Um, so the club had to, you know, completely outsource their staff for like this one night. Um, you know, so all these, so the so 40 workers, they picketed outside the club, uh, you know, the show still went on, but like, so 40, uh, you know, 40, 40 workers from the club. Uh, and then they were joined by like 150 more people. So there was just this big, you know, big protest out of this, you know, outside of this cool, uh, you know, outside of this club, um, which, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty awesome. There was also, you know, and yeah. then, yeah. I, you know, I read that and I thought that was like fantastic, you know, because these people just putting their jobs on the line for like, you know, what they believe in, which is, you know, just cool as shit. Absolutely. You know, yeah, that was that's always, uh, you know, uh, uh, very what's the word I'm looking for? We're, we're approaching midnight here. Uh, the, I'm having uh, <laughs> inspiring. There we go. Thank you. All right, <laughs> No, right. that was uh, th- thank you for both. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, uh, I-, I think you'll find that obviously there are, you know, I, th- I, th- I think the story, the two stories you told actually tell uh, a-, a-, a more, uh, a larger story about where the party is sort of, not the party, where the base is sort of going. I think you are going to see um, the base get a lot more progressive as older people sort of get older and are less in numbers for various reasons and younger people becoming a larger part of the electorate. I mean, the thing here too is that, and studies have shown this, millennials and Gen Z are not getting more conservative as they get older. They are bucking that trend. Yeah, which means yeah, yeah, which means that as they get older and the baby boomers and Gen X and the generation before baby boomers, is that still the is that the silent it's generation still? It's the greatest generation. The I greatest think. generation. The right. generation and the silent generation is the it's people before, before that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how many silent before. generation people there are left, but uh as all those generations get older and they're no longer here. I think everything is going to move. You know, I I don't, I don't, I think the country is still more conservative overall than we'd like it to be. But I think we will get further to the left. Not, we won't become a leftist country, but we will be further towards the left than the center right, if even not further right than we, than that we currently are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, that's... and I think those two stories you told, I mean, who's on Facebook? We know, um, especially in those type of groups. It's, you know, obviously it's not just older people, but they do make a large portion of politics talk yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. yeah the, the guy that runs the site might be, this page might be younger than me. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm like the grandpa of millennials. I'm 42. <laughs> right. I mean, there are, there are definitely careerists, uh, uh, careerist millennials and Gen Zers, who are just party faithful, hoping to have a career 
in politics. But I mean, they also don't make up the majority. I mean, they might be the loudest online because they they have the the ability to be plugged into the political bubble and interact and you know the online discourse every day, but they're not the majority. I got people in the chat saying "rest in peace, Charlie Chaplin," <laughs> because I mentioned the Silent Generation. <laughs> what 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 is the age group for Silent Generation? I gotta know because there's gotta be. People born between 1928 and 1946, there are definitely still really? silent generation people around. Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. I thought, huh. I thought silent generation like pre was like, you know, people that fought in World War One. you know, like my great, great, great grandfather or something. Um, that's actually that's we, 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 we flipped them. The greatest generation is. Um, oh, they're the World War One people. They're 1901 to 1927. Okay. Silent generations after them, because mm. it's not like silent movies. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> that's. I think that's where we were thinking. Is the silent generation? Um, I remember reading why they were called the silent generation, but I can't recall why were they called the silent they, generation. They get, they get drowned out by the boomers, their children. <laughs> Um, the most startling fact about the younger generation, this was back in 1951, and this was written, is its silence. With some rare exceptions, youth is nowhere near the rostrum. By comparison, the flaming youth of their fathers and mothers, today's younger generation is still small flame. It does not issue manifestos, make speeches, or carry posters. It's been called the silent generation. Um, I mean, this is also weird to call them the silent generation, because... 1928 to 1945 i mean they certainly played a role in like the yeah. civil rights movement and like what the 1950s they would have been like the 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 1950s and 60s they would have been like the driving generation behind like the 1960s like subcultures and like rock and roll weird yeah. to call them the silent generation <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Some sociologist, you know, thought it was a good idea. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, uh, what what what's the generation after Gen Z? I forgot. Gen Alpha, I think they're called. That's Gen my Alpha. kids. Yeah, that's my kids. I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't really know why they're really really calling them that. Why is it called? Why they called Gen know. Alpha? Well, you you know, they got to develop a personality, like uh, generation, like millennials were. You know, they were weren't they Generation Y for a minute? You know, I don't know. Um, well, the, the Gen Alpha is from just a random 2008 survey by an Australian consulting agency. Really weird. We're really, <laughs> really scraping the bow. I mean, millennials make sense. That's a name that actually makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the turn yeah. of the millennium. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yeah, because I have a I have a one year old. So, I mean, he's probably too young to be Alpha, right? He's like whatever the next thing, whatever they're gonna call the next thing. I don't know. <laughs> Right. Randall Smith in the chat says, is Matt a 20 something? I wish, man, I'm not Gen Z. I, I love that people think I'm like a full 10 to 15 years younger than I am. I am too amid the older millennial cohort, although not as elder as you, my friend. I'm not one of the nice elder years. millennials, but I am one of the older okay. millennials. I'm an I'm an 86. Uh, uh, I'm 86. Uh, 1986. What would you say? My sister was born in 86. There you go. Yeah. My baby sister. My God. I'm yeah. so old. You're, you're, you're a 37 to 38 year old baby sister. Yes. Yep. We'll always be a baby to you though. I get it. I have, oh, yeah. uh, sib I have younger siblings too. Oh, well, um, take care. Great call. Appreciate it. Have a great night. You too. And was this your first time calling in? No, I called like a year and a half ago talking about my, um, you know, racist ass white supremacist sheriff who big fan of Israel, as it turns out. He was on the local he was on the local talk radio station like on October 8th talking about how like um, about about the time he visited one of the, uh, you know, one of the one of the, uh, you know, he, well, he visited Israel. The, the, he yeah. visited uh, one of the kibbutzes. Yeah, he, was he, could, he could he he was saying that he could hear Hamas in the tunnels. <laughs> while in israel yeah dude and uh, uh, dude the guy's nuts that's, anyway. uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So he was. That's he not was accurate, by the way. You cannot. You, you cannot, in he fact, he hear them in the tunnels. He wasn't sure where they were coming from, and somebody told him, "Oh, it's Hamas. They're in the tunnels underneath us." And I don't know. That's that. I don't think that was true. I just don't. <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 I uh, well, for for one, it's definitely not true because for first of all, Hamas definitely does not have tunnels under Israel. They just dig right into the kibbutzes. They're very good at it. I mean, that's, that's the thing, though. Like, if if they had that ability, they wouldn't have needed to paraglide into the kibbutzes over the fencing and security uh, areas on the border of Gaza. On October seventh, they would be able to use the tunnels. There's no tunnels under Israel. It's just unbelievable. All right, uh, great call, great call. Really appreciate it. Definitely call in more than once every year and a half. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on my phone right now. I don't know how to hang this thing up because this is the it actually, I'll, 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 I'll hang up for you. You're coming in. You're you're coming in loud and clear. Audio fine, video oh, fine. Good. So don't worry about calling in next time like this. All right, take it easy, bud. All right, have a good night. You too. All right. I saw Kowalski calling in. Kowalski, I'll take you one last call of the night. I will be happy to take your call. Um, He does. He did. That last caller did look a bit like David Grohl. Uh, Very true. Uh, If you want to call back in, Kowalski, I'll take your call. One last call of the night. Um, about super chats. Let's see. Uh, OG Smirnoff says with a super chat, first time watching you and agree with everything you are saying. Oh, I thank you so much. OG Smirnoff. I hope you, um, uh, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, hit the follow button on Twitch, wherever you prefer. Just so when I go live or I got new content going up, you'll, you'll get it. And uh, glad to have you on board. Hope to see you in the chats and maybe even calling in in the near future. Um, are we not men with a super chat? Two super chats. Ten dollars overall. One just a blank super chat. And the other, uh, I'll read your last super chat in a second. Are we not men? Let me take this call from Kowalski. Hey, Kowalski. Uh, what were you to talk about? Well, I just wanted to know if you've heard about this thing called climate change. I have not. What is this? So apparently <laughs> the rich are trying to kill us and they're building bunkers. <gasps> Say it ain't so. Yes. Um, I've been looking into it and I got to say, this looks like it's going to be problematic for the economy. If, uh, if the global ecology collapses, it'll definitely, we will have a recession by the fourth quarter. And you know what? I don't know if that's such a... Totally bad thing with the way uh, everything's going. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm an accelerationist in that way. Yeah. I'm, I, I mean, listen, I will say this. Like, you know, it, it, with, with everything is going up in price. Housing is just continuing to get so out of reach for so many people. I'm not saying I want a recession. But I do think there, there, there needs to be, there, there, there's got to be a point where so, so, so something changes, right? I mean, I don't know how much longer this could sustain. There's going to be a point where the vast majority will just not be able to do very basic necessity, like afford very basic necessities. Yeah, me personally, and now, now I, I don't say this because I want this to happen or because I believe in these institutions, but I have heard some grumblings from like the chambers of commerce who are talking about how like rent prices are starting to basically destroy a lot of the service economy just because people are having to spend so much money going to essentially landlords. So yeah. we could have some interesting bedfellows pretty soon because uh, this is going to piss off a lot of people. But right, but it, some, will it will it be oh. soon enough though? Like you know, it is. I you know I, I I don't know what could they're gonna pass laws I mean I, I really don't know what's gonna happen here like the there's housing gotta be situation will correct itself in about eight years that's too long for a lot of people including me I mean I uh you know it's uh you know I, I don't I don't know what a lot of people are gonna do it's getting so out of whack um it's just 
it's the the it, something's got to give here. Well, what's going to give is going to be the hearts of a lot. Like of there boomers. needs to be a housing market reset. Yeah, that would be ideal, or uh, a massive government housing building program for like medium density housing in a lot of places. There's a lot of land that's gone I, to waste, I, I, and I, land I price speculation is also driving up a lot of this too. But the problem, the problem with that is like there still needs to be jobs in those areas that then make sense for even people to move to to even be able to afford that cheaper housing. And, uh, you know, if that's not done, then what's the point of building out those areas? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, I've told you about my crackpot plan to revitalize rural America, haven't I? I don't think you have. What? How is that possible? I've been calling. It's also possible. I just like forgot. Three years. It's also possible. I just forgot. Wow. Matt in his old age is finally catching I, up. With I, I will say I am forgetting a lot more than I used to. And it's making me a little bit nervous. I, I hope I'm uh, I hope I'm not losing it already. But go ahead. Um, basically, my whole thought process on it has always been um, due to rural flight. A lot of our small towns now only have like a few hundred people in them at their peak during the 1930s. Most of these communities sustained a population of like 5,000 to 7,000 people. I think if you were to do a nationwide housing program, you should do it in these rural areas because A, it'll be cheaper because the land's cheaper. B, uh, for a lot of your base necessities for a town like uh, schools and clinics and hospitals, now all of a sudden that's justifiable to be built in that community because there'll be enough people there. That and I think people just would enjoy kind of like a slower town vibe and if you can get a few thousand people then you can also get in you know like your base jobs you know a few restaurants machine shops people going to carpentry welding and all that jazz but the thing i've always wanted is we build giant greenhouses in these uh towns so they're nearly self-sufficient for all their veggie needs that way you also have like a recreational space in the winter where there will be nice, humid, green spaces. So, I mean, like think about it. Valentine's Day, you can go on a nice, pleasant stroll through an orchard that's in your town and it'll be nice and warm. How romantic. I know. I'm like a poet here. <laughs> but they would also serve the practical purpose of people being more connected to their food, more connected to like the growth cycle and uh, by bringing all of this fresh produce you could eliminate food deserts nutritional deserts while at the same time getting rid of a lot of that processed food and it would build a sense of community because all of these greenhouses need to be owned by the community operated by the community in a democratic fashion that way it doesn't get outsourced to some sort of company that's going to try to you know monopolize the whole thing it'd be a community space that would also help reduce a lot of the water demand in the Southwest. And because these are climate controlled environments, it doesn't really matter if you have a massive heat wave or, you know, a late frost, early frost, it's all protected because it's technically indoors. Interesting. And by moving a bunch of people to these small towns, you reduce the population in the major metros, fewer people, same housing supply, supply demand should go down. If it doesn't, I, think that's I guess a, we we force them to by deploying I think, I think the that, National Guard. <laughs> I think some of that's a, a decent idea, Kowalski. I, I, depending on where you live and what you're looking for, um, yeah, I think that could work in certain aspects. It probably wouldn't help my situation, my scenario, but um, you know, it would I, if half of your neighbors moved out, though. Ah. Uh, Oh, that's a that's a good that, that that's, that's that's the kind of the whole idea is that not everybody would have to take you up on this offer but those who do reduce the number of people in the major cities and when that population goes down this is, there's now more housing per person mm. so theoretically it should go down also my whole idea is with these rural houses is that it would be a homestead project so um if you live in them for seven years you get to keep the house and uh you know, it, it's a big burden to undertake to, you know, move to a new area, especially a rural area. So it's an incentive. 
You know, now I'm feeling it, Kowalski. You really laid it out, all, all the aspects, the pluses, uh, and not just for the individual going there, but for the individuals who live in the areas where people are leaving. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. All right, well... Especially um, down with the National Guard part. Let's force these pe- let's force people out of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. That would be a very interesting for you to go to your landlord and say, hey, I brought some buddies to negotiate with you. I really do think, like, it's it really amazes me that, no, that something more has been done already. I really do think so many areas in the economy would really start, you know, bustling if people weren't giving so much to their landlords, if rent wasn't taking such a large portion of their income. It's it's really, I think, dragging the entire economy in many ways. It is, especially when a lot of your landlords are big, faceless corporate entities. Because um, so even where I'm at here in uh, central Nebraska, um, my hometown is starting to see a lot of uh, rents get up to what we would conceivably say is outrageous. Our cost of living is like one third of what it is in New York. But like decent rents here you're still looking at like maybe two grand for like a small house which i know is probably nice for where you're at but out here it's different but a lot of these things are now being owned by like groups out of denver or dallas or new york or london so all of that money that gets made locally that you pay to your landlord leaves the local community The same is also true with a lot of land because there are big corporations that have been buying up a lot of land. And when farmers pay their rent, well, you don't have any incentive to, you know, invest in soil management or anything like that because, you know, the landlord can just take it the next day to, you know, do somebody bids a slightly higher. So it's an investment problem. And the money that the land generates, all of that money now leaves the local economy because it's going to, you know, your groups out of Dallas or Denver or New York or Miami, wherever these, you know, agencies are located. Actually, a lot of them are moving to Florida because of taxes. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, it's just like a drain because if the local guys kept that, then it would get, you know, spent in at least the local economy and at least support other people's employment. So, Like, it is just a massive drain nationwide, no matter how you look at it. Like, the issues you guys are feeling in the coastal areas, we're feeling here, too. It was delayed a couple years, but it's going to be just as bad, so. I mean, I got to tell you, man, if if things don't change, then in a few years, maybe not even a few, uh, I might one day day be forced to become a Long Island guy. And that's the last thing I want to do. But the prices in New York City, I don't know what I'm going to do eventually. My kids are getting older. They can't share a room for many more years. Um, It's going to get tough. One thing I would say is that uh, if you can do a lot of your job remotely, uh, cost of living in Nebraska is one third. Um, We have one of the best educational public school systems in the nation. Probably not Corn moving to Nebraska. Are awesome. <laughs> we are the second most water secure state in the country, but Michigan cheats because it's got the lakes. Just saying. Yeah, just it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be, be with the if I was a if it was just me and my wife and that was it, it'd be a lot easier to make that decision. But I can't, I can't be one of those parents who takes my kids from everything they know and all their friends and stuff. I'd feel horrible, especially at this age. Maybe if they were a little bit older, if they were like high school age, college age. Well, look, but... when, when my great great grandfather came to this country, he didn't come alone. He came with a lot of his neighbors and a lot of his friends. So and maybe all of that, family. the entire. All of you need to move <laughs> and take over a small town. We'll call it, I don't know, Queens. I think you're in Queens, right? I am in Queens, yep. Yeah. Okay, so you guys will take over a small town of just a couple hundred with bringing a few thousand from Queens, and then boom. Yeah, I mean, 
if everybody moves along with us, sure. And also the, the, the grandparents, that's another aspect that plays a major role in us staying here. Uh, yeah, we got to figure it we'll, we'll figure it out. We still got a few more years safe in this apartment, I think, before it gets to the point where... Oh, no, they, you, you've got a year and a half. That's when Hurricane Ian is going to uh, hit New York. And wait, mass what? Exodus. Yep. Are you being serious? No, how could I possibly? <laughs> now, if that does happen, I'm going to feel like a jackass. But Wait, the, it, that can happen because there already was a Hurricane Ian in 2022, and they don't use hurricane names. So uh, It's Ian with a Q. I, Ian with a Q, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is the Q in the front or at the end? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Kowalski, this was a, a great, great call, as always. Yeah, we'll f- we'll figure things out. Hopefully, there's just a huge uh, market reset. Uh, fingers crossed. Maybe uh, the housing market and only the housing market will crash. Um, <laughs> mm. One can hope. All right. Well, you have a good night. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> All right. Let's read some super chats here. And then uh, that's 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 the show for tonight. I gotta then cut it the, the the scam economy episode up for the podcast feed for tomorrow. And yeah, well, we're, we're, we still got a few super chats to read. Here we go. Are we not men with a super chat? I always grouped generations with big cultural and global events like nine eleven uh, started my generation, and COVID started this current generation. Yeah, I guess that's that's one way to look at it. Um, but it has to be who that event affects though, because the cutoff for millennials is 96, which makes total sense in your scenario because, you know, kids born from the early eighties, I think millennial starts at 81 or 82 and goes to 96. And that would definitely be the age range where. 9-11 9-11 would play an integral role in your coming of age, in your childhood, you know, depending on where you are, on the, 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 whether you're an older millennial or a younger millennial. And then COVID, obviously, um, Gen Z, I guess, they were in school uh, when that happened. I mean, my, my kids are Gen Alpha, and they were in school. My, my son was in school, but he was like in... in, in um, kindergarten so it did play an integral role in his life though because socialization skills are a major role in school or major part of schooling then um if he wasn't such an outgoing social sociable kid i think he would have been hit really hard by covid like i think he would still have a lot of the effects of the lockdowns affecting him but he's very outgoing very friendly very social as is like just i think naturally that's his personality so i think he was able to avoid some of those things um but i'm sure it still affected him in many ways my my daughter i think it affected her more she was only six months when the lockdowns started but she missed a lot of that early childhood like uh you know there's a there's a, a an organization you probably heard of it if you have kids or had younger siblings Jimboree, which was like a pro it's a program there's play it's, it's i think it's nationwide but it's definitely in places outside of new york too where like social classes like fun activities and like gymnastics type things for like jungle gym type activities for kids like starting at like six months to like up until like they would go to pre-k i guess so like from six months to like two or three year old she missed out on that entirely she missed out on a lot of like the early playground type stuff um but back to your point so i do think with covid i think it affected a more broader group of um generations because gen z would be you know in high school and stuff but it certainly affected them there too although my 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 thing was that Man, if I was in high school or college even when COVID hit and wasn't working and had responsibilities and kids, 
uh, the lockdowns would have gone very differently in my household. It would have been uh, binge watching video games nonstop. Uh, but <laughs> that's not how I wasn't in high school or college when that was going on. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Dakota Foster with a super chat. Just wanting to thank you for the great show and say I love you to my wife who is watching you right now. Uh, Binder2024. Oh, thank you, Dakota. And uh, there you go to Dakota's wife who is watching me right now. Dakota says they love you. Um, and let's go over to Twitch. Bum, bum, ba, 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 ra. Uh, over on Twitch. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Amused Mob resubscribe with Prime. Subscriber for 19 months. I'm Ron Burgundy. That's all for me tonight, folks. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Thank you for that, Amused Mob. 19 month subscriber. Wow, thanks. Rebel Without a Cause resubscribe with Prime. Oh, out doing Amused Mob. Subscriber for 23 months. Thank you, Rebel Without a Cause. Once again, thank you, Dylan Burns, for the raid, and thank you for sticking around to the Dylan Burns viewers who are still watching. Ponderosapine, or Ponderosa Pine, resubscriber for one month at Tier 1, subscriber for 26 months. Thank you, Ponderosa Pine, and that's with the tier level subscription, not the Prime. Wow, thank you so much. Hip Toga, subscribe with Prime. New subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing, Hip Toga. Really appreciate it. Um, and Valinova cheered 500 bits. Don't care. Voting for Jank, says Valinova. Uh, well, if you didn't vote today, I think you, I don't know how many more <laughs> chances you'll get. Oh, we got another uh, YouTube super chat jumping in at the last minute here. So Ren with a super chat says, have you seen the trend of teachers on TikTok saying their kids are way behind? Is that real? I've not seen that trend, but it wouldn't surprise me if certain age groups were hit harder by COVID. Um, my son's class at school is actually much smaller than the grades below him and above him, like the number of kids in the class. Like second grade, he's in third grade, the second grade class and the fifth, fourth grade class, like double if not more, some some of them, the size of my son's third grade class. And I think that maybe, you know, he was in pre-K when it started. They were continuing remote in kindergarten, and he was remote for some of first grade. Those are like the grades where kids start at a school. So I'm wondering if because locals maybe moved during the lockdowns or were staying in, you know, um, less dense areas outside of New York City, uh, even if they were just out on Long Island or different areas in the outer boroughs where there's just less people, if kids who would have went to my son's school no longer were in the zone or area to go there during that integral time period where they would have been deciding to go to the school. Um, you know, uh, or in the area to go to the school, I should say. So I think that's definitely a, uh, a part of it uh, for, for my son. So it wouldn't surprise me if there were some older grades who missed out on more integral, uh, you know, classes where they teach some of those foundational basics. You know, if you if you were supposed to be learning basic math, reading skills, you know, during COVID, and you were doing it remote, it might might have been difficult. Any results from Cali yet, says the anti-corporatist. Well, 
I think we're done with California. I mean, the vote's still coming in, obviously, but Adam Schiff and Steve Garvey, the Republican, is advancing in the Senate election. Katie Porter and Barbara Lee outright lost, not even going to the runoff. I mean, the the uh, part of the election. Um, and, I mean, I don't think there was an uncommitted vote in California, was there? No. There was no uncommitted choice at all. So, that wasn't an option in California. Um, yeah. All right, folks. It's 1230 over here. Had a fantastic time with you all. Uh, who should I raid on Twitch? And while I'm asking you that, first, uh, uh, oh, I didn't even talk about Sting's retirement. Pro wrestler Sting retired, legendary wrestler retiring on Sunday. Uh, this past Sunday, had his final match, which was insane. Really great. Um, and I didn't talk about it. I saw Dune Part 2, which I thought was incredible, actually. And I'm not a Dune person either. In fact, I'm a Dune, been very critical of Dune. But part two, man. Um. Wait, what? What? Lord Hemel says Matt shoe shirt show shirt. What? What? What shirt am I wearing? Is that what you're asking? Satiated Skater says, there's this great lefty streamer named Matt Binder that you could raid. Oh, show my shirt. Oh, okay, sure. There you go. It's a... It's a... Uh, folk punk band called Doom Scroll. I saw them a couple weeks ago. They came... Uh, they were touring with Apes of the State. Another great folk punk band. Check them out. Both Apes of the State and Doom Scroll. Doom Scroll, yes. Doom Scroll is the name of the band. Show it again. Looks like a very metal shirt, right? But they're they're a folk punk band. Um, yeah. All right. Who should I raid? Uh, someone gave me a suggestion. Who's Peganox. What do they? What do they? What do they stream? I like to. I like to send people towards someone who my viewers will stick around for, like um, similar coverage. It doesn't be exactly the same, but you know, politics discussions, tech discussions, even like pop culture, movies, music, stuff like that. That's in my sort of. All right, my dad mentioned how Paul Heyman's going to the Hall of Fame, all right? Yeah. If uh who's Adrian Vixen? What do they stream? What do they what's their I don't see them right now. I don't think they're on. In terms of who I follow, I see USA Hole is on, Amy EC3 is on, Riverboat Jack, um, Homozy Goat, Actual Jake. Blue Lizard Guts, someone said. Blue Lizard Guts. Let's see. Hmm. So it's between Blue Lizard Guts and Pex... Uh, what was it? I lost the... 
comment. It's late. I'm his, I'm, uh, yeah, Sting is still fighting, says Bad Lefty. Wow, he must be 60 plus. Yeah, he's in his 60s. And let me tell you, he had some of the best matches of his career in the past couple of years. He is amazingly good at reinventing himself um, and wrestling a style that fits what he can do, yet still being really good at it. It's 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 really I, I'm I'm a big fan of Sting. Darby says thank you, Matt, for your work. Oh, I appreciate it. All right, so it's between Peganox and Blue Lizard Guts. Just drop you drop who you want me to sit to to raid in the chat right now. Quick, 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 quick. Who's it gonna be? And uh, with that said, uh, don't forget, I'll be on the Majority Report on Thursday, as per usual. I will be on Leftist Mafia on Thursday, as per usual. And on Leftist Mafia on Thursday, we will be streaming the same time as Biden's State of the Union address. So we're very likely going to live stream that with commentary. So I'm looking forward to that. You should all look forward to that, too. It should be fun. All right, I got uh, more people saying blue lizard guts. I'll definitely raid Peganox next time. But let's do blue blue lizard guts because that's what more people said right now. All right, let's do it. Hitting that raid button. All right, folks, don't forget, if you can, patreon.com slash Matt Binder to support this show. Uh, really appreciate it. If you can, it's been a, a rough couple of months when it comes to uh, people who support the show financially. A lot of people are, like we were talking about earlier, financial issues. Things are getting expensive. Times are getting tough. So some people had to drop out of their support because you should if you can't afford to give to the Patreon page. So please, you, yourself, your family, they come first. But if you are someone who can afford to do so, patreon.com slash Matt Bender. And with that said, I will see you all next time on the stream. <laughs>